Evening, ladies and gents. It's Midlife Gamer Guy here, or you can call me Mag. Hello, how's it going? How is your Tuesday tonight? Welcome on in. Uh, this is the talk show where we talk about all the latest gaming news and reviews from the last seven days or so. Let's go have a look who's in chat straight away. Uh, Mr. Dan Game Tank, good evening. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Mr. Danker, hello. He's trying out, he's dug out his VR headset and he's trying a new uh, Beat Saber update. There you go. Uh, Mr. Games Guru, good evening. How are you? Jesse, good evening. How are you doing? Good to see you all. iQuail, good evening. How's it going? Apop, how are you doing? Can't even say his own name. Do you know what? I sent a message to uh, Dave and our guests to basically say, let's see if I can speak English for the next two hours. And I fucked it up on the first hurdle brilliantly. I absolutely fucked it up on the first hurdle. So plenty more of that to come later in the show. Uh, Sawyer, good evening. He's here for the announcement. Well, we've got a very big announcement in 55 minutes, timeless related. And it's nothing that we've ever hinted to or ever mentioned before to anybody apart from the people that in the inner circle that know. But there you go. Uh, all the better for seeing you, lovely lot. What's what's your secret? What's my secret for what? Looking young. A lot of a lot of fucking stress organizing events. That's what does it. Manic, good evening. How you doing? Matt, evening, Magafa. Hello. Kylie. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How's it going? Lovely. Uh, I'm feeling better today. Yeah, APOT wasn't very well yesterday, so glad to see you're feeling better. Uh, John Cena is coming to Timeless. I don't think we've got the budget for that. Jesse, have we got the budget? Uh Big announcement. That is all the information. Lies. 57 days to go. Yes, big announcement. Here we go again, peeps. Flame, good evening. Uh, playing the new story content on Warframe. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, now, obviously, uh, I can't do everything. Uh, oh, let me get this right. The Maliden Star. Thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. If I got that name wrong, I apologise in advance because I'm terrible with stuff like this. Uh, so there you go. Not hinted at. There goes the toilet experience. That, yeah, not not the kissing booth or the VR toilet experience. None of that, I quail. None of that's happening. Don't have a budget for times. So we just have a budgie. And when I say budgie, it's just mag. Thanks, Jesse. Cheers. Bondi, good evening. How are you? Uh, the weather has been humid today. It's been crap here. Uh, don't worry about it. Oh, I take it I got it completely wrong. I take it I got put you. you oh, oh, second hurdle failed. Anyway, with a show like this, obviously, I'm not really the real blame. Oh, fucking hell, so I can't talk. <laughs> oh, anyone would think I've been drinking. I haven't. Maybe that's the dilemma. Uh, with a show like this, that doesn't run that smoothly. Uh, obviously, I'm just the uh, gob on the stick. There is someone who knows far more about computer games than I ever could in a thousand lifetimes. Please welcome the co-host that knows the most and will probably have better grammar than I will ever will in a lifetime. It's Mr. David Jones. Good evening, mate. How are you doing? I'm struggling. You are, are you? I'll have to do my best to uh, you know, keep the English language going and, uh, and you get Please it right. do. You've got to win it for the team. Come on, mate. <laughs> I will do my best. Oh, my life. How are you? And as I always ask, what you've been playing over the last seven days? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I've uh, I've played a, a few different things, two of which we're talking about later on. So I'm nice. going those. But the one I spent the most time with over the weekend, um, actually, there are two things I did play over the weekend that we aren't talking about. So I spent a bit more time on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because I haven't okay. played that for a good few months. I kind of did the first couple of chapters. And I think it was got distracted by other stuff. But I got back into it over the weekend, so I've done a couple more chapters on that, just getting through it. Only on chapter four, so there's still like quite a ways to okay, go. So yeah. It's going to take me a long time to get through that one, but I'm still enjoying it. It's uh, it's pretty good. I think the combat system in it works pretty well. The open world is still kind of okay. But still, it's got that usual sort of repetition there, sort of filler content, but luckily the combat, you know, keeps it decent, still makes it enjoyable. And apart from that, I was fiddling around a bit in a VR, Playing a game which I think it came out this year, but probably no one's really ever heard of. It's a game called Max Mustard. I, I picked it up the other week because like there was like a sudden ninety percent uh, money off code for it that popped up on um, Reddit. So when I posted, it, so I thought, oh, I'll get that. It's like two pound fifty. So 
So I thought, I'll get that. And what it is, it is based, if you've ever played um, Astro Bot on PSVR. Yes. That type of 3D platformer, exactly like that. Easy way to describe it. it. And it's pretty good, actually. Hasn't quite got the budget or charm of like the Astro Bot, but still okay. a pretty good attempt. Uh, it runs really well on the Quest. Gameplay is good fun. And uh, yeah, yeah, if, if you're interested, it's worth having a look at. I just don't think it got massively marketed. I don't think it's a, a well known dev behind it, okay. the marketing budget, but it is a, a good game. Dank has heard of it. So that's, mm. you know, Dank is another one that's in the know with all the gaming and stuff. So there you go. Johnny, hello. How are you doing? Booyaka Shah, indeed, my friend. Good to see you as always. Hope you're well. Um, oh, my life. Yeah. So we've got a few that, uh, Two, two, well, two games you said we're going to be talking about on the show tonight. And um, it's been a funny game, uh, funny game for weeks. Fucking hell. It's been a funny week for games again, because we're out the back of Summer Games Fest. And also the fact that I'm learning to speak English. Um, and so... You're not doing very well. You need to get some, doing, some more yeah. courses. No, I'm going to have to retake the exam, clearly. But mm. it's the fact that, again... We've not had loads of games. And there were some games that were due to come out today that have actually been pushed back to August. And there's some games that kind of did come out. And then we're actually going to cheat because there is going to be one game that actually we should have talked about on last week's show, but we didn't get to. So we've chucked that in just because some of you may see me stream it as well. But there you go. So we've got that. But we are going to cover the Nintendo Switch stuff that was announced today because that happened today. And we've got some new stories and stuff. Uh, uh, we are, uh, we are covering Still Wakes the Deep. That is happening today. So that came out, the reviews actually came out for that yesterday. So we're quite fortunate that we're doing that. And I'll be playing that on Thursday, but we'll talk about that later. Tomo, good evening. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Mr. Newton, hello. Just jumping in to say, you sexy. So are you, fella. Good to see you. Uh, great to see you. Um, so without further ado, let's get this week's wonderful guest on. This lovely lady uh, is a fantastic streamer. However, as you will find out, uh, she wants to do a lot more than streaming because she is massively invested in the world of events, particularly gaming events, of which she's got one that she's working on. And I'm very proud to say that she's working alongside me and Mr. Kelt Brenny, who's just appeared in chat. Hello, mate. Your time is impeccable um, because we are running... The brand new revamped uh, Manchester Twitch meetup on Friday night, which will be broadcast live on the front page of Twitch. Please give it up for the one, the only Lisa Paranorma. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm How are we doing? Good. How are we good? How are you? Yeah, I'm awesome. Thank you. Excited to be here. Excited to uh, represent in for for the game, for the events and in industry and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm very All excited. Right. Well, and see some, few... see some game trailers. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about the games and stuff in a bit, but we want to talk a little bit about you first, if that's okay. So for okay. those who are not familiar with you, um, thank you to Mr. Dan Game Tank as you dropped all Lisa's socials and her Twitch channel Aww. in the chat. So go give her a follow now on Twitch or go follow her Insta, go follow her, uh, we don't call it X, Twitter. Um, <laughs> and explain what you do on your Twitch channel first, and then we'll talk about the events. For everyone yeah sure um so yeah i'm lisa paranorma uh we mainly play like a lot of rpgs story games horror games we do do some like community nights as well we do some like party animals um among us we do we do quite a lot of community games and stuff but uh one of the main things that i'm kind of known for is and i will be bringing back very shortly is mental health streams um so we do something called a well-being wednesday which is where we basically open the chat up to the community and to anybody who's new to the channel or anyone who's been there a while and also including myself and um, we just kind of have like um a catch up really and uh anything that's going on in people's lives be it good be it bad be it ugly we will go in we will delve into it and we will um get things off our chests is the best way i can describe it um and i've been doing this for about a year and a half now and they've been going down really really well because there is a lot of places on twitch where you can actually you know openly talk about stuff that's going on in your life um yeah. you know people call it trauma dumping and which i completely get you know you've, you've got a certain vibe to your channel or you've got a certain energy that you're that you're putting across um so basically um we want to have that space that's you know we're not professionals and we make sure that we tell everybody that we're not professionals but we're there to listen we're there to um 
you know, a problem shared is a problem halved kind of situation is what we're going for. And sometimes it's good just to be able to talk to a random person uh, on the internet and just get get something out there um, and, and get like someone else's opinion on it and stuff like that. Um, and I found it massively helped me. Um, I've been through like a lot of grief and things like that. Um, so it's massively helped me, give me a platform to be able to speak about my own issues and yeah. stuff that I've been through. And yeah, it seems to help a lot of the community and everybody seems to really enjoy it. So I'm going to carry on doing it for as long as I can. Nice. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Much love, Lisa. Great concept. We'll, <laughs> more to Sawyer. well, Sawyer, you will get to meet Lisa on Friday. Because Sawyer hey. will be there. <laughs> anyway, you can, you awesome. can have a good chat with her uh looks like the game's all here yes indeed big jesse's giving you a round of applause there now Thank obviously you. um lisa you've been at events such as format i believe before mm -hmm. and you're going to be at format yep. again in september uh and obviously you're at our very own mm -hmm. event at mm -hmm. timeless but um not only yes. are you very kindly come on board to join our little team with Brenny and me and also control our Dan, bless him, who's away on all day. So he's going to miss the first event that we're working on. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you, um, I mean, tell us why, before I mention RawCon and everything, tell us why you wanted mm -hmm. to get into mm -hmm. events and specifically gaming events and stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm also part of another sort of community called the Nightbreed. Um, and I've been organizing their events for the last sort of two-ish years, I'd say. Um, and it's nothing, like we didn't do anything crazy. It was just literally very low key, go to a pub, have some food, play some golf, do some karaoke, that kind of thing. But yeah. organizing 30, 30 streamers and trying to get them to pay <laughs> is a lot more than you think. But no, yeah. I really enjoyed it. And I got to meet, I've got to meet so many amazing streamers and amazing friendships over this last sort of two or three years. And I just carry, I really, really enjoy it. I get a buzz from it and um, making people happy makes me happy. So if I can do that and do something that I love doing and do events and do gaming, then, then I'm very, very happy to do that. Um, and yeah, I am quite organized when I want to be. Um, I work really well under pressure. <laughs> um, and a lot of these things are quite under pressure so yeah i feel like i've got i've made quite a few connections over the last couple of years as well yeah. um which i i think it's because like you know when it, I've, from what people have told me as well is that i come across quite genuine like i genuinely want to get to know people um i'm interested in what they do i'm interested in their family life i'm interested in everything basically and i just want to meet as many people and socialize and get as much information and uh, as i can and and take that further um and try and just make them happy and in, enjoy the events that they go to basically and just do something a bit different that's what i like i like doing <laughs> if that makes sense yeah it makes perfect sense i think that's cool <laughs> it's bringing it's 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 a theme we we were talking about wasn't it for this event on friday is that a mm -hmm. lot of people like us or other content mm -hmm. creators don't leave their rooms or don't go out no. and everything's COVID no. time. people are gone it's fine <laughs> to just stay in my little bubble and not go anywhere and yeah. it can be scary for people and you know some mm -hmm. people are like stupidly overconfident like i am like you throw me into a room i'll talk to everyone i don't care right yeah. but not everyone can do that and yeah. it's the fact that trying to get people to come out of their comfort zones mm -hmm. and get to network and make mm -hmm. new friends and stuff and say there yes there is a little bit of a life after mm -hmm. have you ever known me to be socially awkward Sawyer seriously um <laughs> and um basically just say there's you know not saying there's more <laughs> life than streaming because everyone loves streaming but you can do other things as well with these group of friends but and I, I applaud yeah. you for that because that's really cool Paul no no that is not what we're promoting stop it <laughs> behave it's scary no uh, <laughs> no dude we're not promoting that either we're not doing free sambuca jesus have you ever met oh god oh my god this you can see how this is going to go on friday but it's gonna go. be it's, awesome i can't wait it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be fine we've got a few uh things to smooth out but we're gonna be fine i just want to say hello <laughs> to a few people before we talk a little bit more um ben says there's more life to the streaming making video games as well yeah there you go uh, <laughs> uh, free drinks woo there's not free drinks okay <laughs> just saying uh, Will, they are hello, cheap, by the way. They are cheap. <laughs> they are pretty cheap. cheap Friday, mm. So we're going to say that. So, Will, hello, by the way. Pete from Rapid Reviews, hello. Good to see you. Uh, I saw Peaceful. Hello, Peaceful. How are you? I uh, hope you're well. I'm hoping I'm not missing anyone. If I've missed anyone chat who's popped in since the last two minutes, um, I hope you're all well. So there you go. Uh, I heard free drinks. No free drinks. Maggie's <laughs> awkward. He's just not aware of it. Then when he sledgehammers his way through conversations, I mean, yeah. I <laughs> no fucks given to be honest but there you go um so let's talk about 
another project that you are mm -hmm. working on, which is Rawcon. Tell us all about mm. that. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, Peace, who's in the chat, Peaceful, uh, we run a stream team. Uh, it's his stream team. It's his it's his baby, uh, which is called Raw. Um, and we have up to 40 odd creators, 45, I think maybe now, something like that. Yeah. And we uh, we want to do like a meet up where we can try and get as many uh, Raw members in as possible, but also their community, our own community and anyone in sort of the, the Wales area because it's going to be in Cardiff, uh, but not just Wales, anybody can come. Um, and it's at Revolutions in uh, in Cardiff Centre, Revolutions Club. We've got the whole floor booked out. We've got games, events going on. We've got, um, I don't want to say too much because it's all kind of under wraps at the minute, oh, cool. um, but there yeah. will be sort of like, you know, uh, dev sponsors. Um, we're going to have um, some games and stuff to play. It's going to be really, really fun. It's just going to be another kind of networking event, uh, community event, and we're all really excited to uh, to all meet up in person and, and to have that raw, raw con experience. And hopefully if it goes well, we want to, you know, continue with that in the future. It's going to be good. I'm excited. I think the Gamer Guide magazine have just offered their services for you, Lisa. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, this is another thing. Like, me, me doing this tonight, we can meet more people that want to yeah. get involved in it as well um, if they want to come down to, to, to see us as well. More than uh, press promotion, 100%. He's like, Shh, that would be don't awesome. Say that. I mean, did, <laughs> right then. He's like, I see it. I see the chat. I see it. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, That's Jenny. Great. How are you? Good to see you. I enjoyed your stream last night. Uh, so, yeah, that was the next question, because I was going to ask this, but Ben's asked this in chat. When is it? Uh, it's the 1st of August. Sorry, I, I completely lost it there. Uh, yeah, it's the 1st <laughs> of August. So it's on a Thursday. So a lot of people are, are going to come down for like the weekend kind of thing. So it's similar to like what Format do is it's on a Thursday evening. Um, and yeah, we're, we're saying we can meet up in the mornings the next day and do something wherever, whoever was, whoever's still about basically. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a really, really good evening. We're very excited. It's free tickets as well. Um, I can pop a link in or we can pop a link in at some point. Uh, but if you just go on to Eventbrite, yeah. Rawcon, you'll find it on there. Um, there isn't a lot of tickets left, um, but they are free. So if you do want to reserve your ticket for that, let us know. Um, drop us a message or drop Mag's a message and uh, we can get something sorted. So you want to do, Lisa, send mm -hmm. me a message in the private chat. I will then post yep. it in this chat. And then Mods, if you can keep a copy of that as well and add it to the yep. other shout outs, then we'll add it. So you'll get it shout out every so often on the show. Oh, amazing. That would be a, that would said, be that's cool. enough promo. No, it's not. We'll do more. <laughs> we will do more. There is never enough promo, Peaceful. But there you go. Oh. So uh, chuck that in the private chat for me and then I'll, I'll sort yep. that out. I'll um, do that for you. No problem. So, okay. Don't tell me what to do, Mag. I will. Do this. There, go. there you go. It's, it's there. never game over when it comes to promos. Exactly. Hang on. That sounds familiar. Um, but yeah, if you want to go to RawCon, as Lisa said, the tickets are free. Here is the link. Whoops. And mods, please make a note of that, and we'll do that. But you can go and uh, get your tickets there. And also, I'm going to do this anyway because we might as well plug it now. Um, the Twitch meetup at Arcade Club this Friday, there is four tickets left, yep. as I last checked. Once those four mm -hmm. tickets gone, it's sold out. That's the link for that. So if any any uh, content creators want to come and meet Lisa, me, Brenny, a load of other wonderful people at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. at RK Club, the tickets are free. Um, go check that out um, as well. And we're live broadcasting on the front page of Twitch. There you go. So we will talk a little bit more to Lisa uh, near the end of the show. But before that, shall we crack on with the main bulk of the show? Yeah, let's get to it, mate. Okay. Yep. It's our 172nd show, ladies and gentlemen, and we have got seven new games, including two Monster Hunter uh, stories, remasters, the Alan Wake 2 DLC, Night Springs, and Still Wakes the Deep. Not only that, we've got all the latest gaming news from the last seven days and the Nintendo Direct, which dropped today. So let's crack wow. on our first game. Uh, this, mm -hmm. technically... We should have covered last week, but the reviews didn't really come out until well after we did the last show. Some of you may have seen me play this Monday last week. Dave, I know, has played this. Um, this is the new DLC that was shadow dropped at Summer Games Fest on Saturday the 8th of June of all days. Uh, it's out on PC, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. And this is the first of two DLCs for Alan Wake 2, my game of the year. And this is a Night Springs DLC. 
here comes the trailer and then we're going to tell you how you lot in chat can get a shout out for your channels by a nice little guessing game that we've got let's go Night Springs, a special place, a shifting space, existing in a countless number of parallel realities. Different every time we set upon the road that leads us there, and yet always familiar to us in Night Springs. I'm in danger. Please, my number one fan, you're the only one who can save me. And I will come back for you, my love. And cut. Sean, I'm really happy. This is going to get strange. I was the only one who could save the writer and the very soul of literature. And on the back of Something is different. I am not Try the coffee. I have a shotgun. Well, I got a. Wait, is that. That's a real shotgun? <laughs> you can never truly know how deep the rabbit hole goes in Night Springs. Does look good, that. So, yeah, first DLC. We were kind of expecting around about May time. Um, but then it got shadow dropped for this. We know there's another one coming because they've added it. We think we'll get that on the anniversary of Alan Wake 2, so around about November time. Um, Dave, tell us a little bit more about this because it's not your conventional DLC, but it is a lot of fun, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's set in the um, in Night Springs, which is like a TV series within the Alan Wake universe. So it's a bit like the old Twilight Zone TV series for people who remember that. There's a little self-contained sort of stories kind of like little sort of what if scenarios using characters you know you're familiar with from Alan Wake or from Control because we saw Jesse Faden from Control pop up in there and they you're going through like different areas from the base game so you know I think Jesse's going through the um the theme part that's there Rose is in the the main Bright Falls town so it's reusing some of the locations but it's it is doing something quite fun with them the episode yeah. with Rose the waitress really it just forgets all the survival horror stuff and just gives you loads of ammo for your shotgun and just lets you blast away <laughs> Other ones got more puzzles to them. The third um, episode goes into sort of multiverse type thing and does some very sort of fun stuff towards the end of its uh, its episode, which I won't yeah. spoil because it's fun to uh, to see that stuff. They are fun little stories. I did complete them all over the week weekend. It doesn't take you that long to get through it, which is probably my only complaint about it. I just felt found it was a bit too short. You're kind of just yeah. getting into these and then, oh, it's over. Got to move on to the next one. Mm. They, they're mm. good, but I just felt they could just do a, a bit more to it. I would just like more to play a bit. Because they were good fun. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, some people have said, "Oh, now I know why it's so sh uh, why the price is a lot lower than normal DLCs." Because, I mean, we we hammered through all three bits in a three hour stream, hmm. so they're about forty five minutes each. These, if you play them, or if you like me on the last one and got completely lost in one of the bits, it it goes on a bit longer. But um, I, I I I would agree that the first one. Is probably the most fun and most carefree because you're not really going to die because she's like got infinite ammo in that shotgun. I've never seen a waitress get caked so much in blood. And oh, to be honest, it's quite funny because that one's not that scary. Um, the second one, I'd say, is what leans more into the horror of Alan Wake 2. And it's nice to see Jesse from Control, the game Control, but a variation of her. Um, but is the more difficult puzzle one and horror element. And then the third one, as you say, is downright weird because you're not actually playing the sheriff from Alan Wake 2. You're playing Sean Austin, the actor, who was uh, Iceman in the X-Men films and numerous other things, and he was in Quantum Break, and even Sam Lake's in it playing himself. So it's just like a complete head fuck, that one. Um, but they are good, but I do think feel that they go in order of like, First one's the most fun, then the third one, then the second one, the middle one's kind of the weakest one, I feel. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Again, you kind of just sort of get going in that one. And then yeah. It's so I know, I know really that's the problem with them. They're just a little bit too short. Yeah. But they are um, still fun. Yeah. So, Lisa, have you mm -hmm. played Alan Wake 2 yet? I haven't. I haven't played okay. it yet, but... I've watched a little bit of it because I was modding for someone who was playing it when it first came out and I, mm. I was I was hooked and I was like, you know what? I need to get these games at some point. 
definitely because they look amazing but i'd also like to play the original one as well because i haven't even played the original it's so, just one of those games that you've just you know always on the list that i've just never got yes. to so, i would yeah. say the original now doesn't hold up quite as well and it's quite mm. action orientated tomo says the original is amazing i loved it when it came out but now when you look at it compared to Alan Wake 2, Alan Wake 2 is such a different game because you can see how Remedy have come along because obviously they did Quantum Break, which had TV episodes, and then Control, which was my favourite game of 2019. And then this, you kind of go, this offers so much more because not only is it an action game, it's a horror game, mm. but it's a mystery game as well. And it's kind of like... Yeah. It's, it's, it's got like everything I've ever played. So definitely mm. play the first one, but I'd say... Some people I know have played the first one recently after playing the second one and gone, oh, okay, so maybe do them in order is what I'm going to yeah. say. Okay, so you go. no, that's good advice, thank you. So, folks, we don't review the games, okay? What we do is I scour the internet from all different websites to get an average gamer score. So you've seen people have been putting numbers in chat. So I'm going to quickly go through some of them because people have been putting numbers already. I'll explain what it is. So... Uh, people have been saying, Manic says eight, Rapid said, uh, Pete said nine, uh, Will said eight, uh, Ben said eight, Bondi said eight, uh, Soy said nine, Kelp Brain said 8.5, 8.5 from Kylie, nine from Ben, 8.5 from Danka, one out of ten, crap, I'm back, Johnny's back everyone, woo, that's a high score for Johnny, uh, 8.5 from I Quail. So Flame says seven. So what we basically want you to do is guess a score between zero and 10 of what the average score was. You can have point fives as well. If you get it right, you get a shout out in the chat. OK, so, Dave, let's start with you. What do you reckon this got? I'm going to go for an eight. Going for an eight out of 10. OK, Lisa. Mm, I'd say 7.5. OK, 7.5. Mm -hmm. Anybody else in chat, get your scores in. I don't make the scores up, Sawyer. I do not make them up. They are an average. But what I will state is some people have been going on some websites to check different things and said, oh, well, this got higher. This has got lower. Yes, that's what's called an average. People have been calling me out on this. I take different scores from different websites. Isn't it? There are some websites that do averages and they do change over time. So it's as of what the average is today, not a week down the line, a year down the line or whatever, just to clarify, because we have had some games that got bad average scores that then got better scores further down the line and some that got good scores that went down <laughs> after. Mm. But there you go. Uh, just off looking, I would say an eight, says Tomo. Knowing Alan Wake, it would be great subject to change. There we go. All right. Any more people? Last chance. This is Alan Wake 2 Night Springs DLC, which came out on Saturday the 8th on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X. And Manic says, <coughs> Anthem. <coughs> yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> and if there are no more guesses in the chat, I can tell you that Alan Wake 2 DLC got a whopping 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. Fair play. Pretty damn good. So mm. um, congratulations to the following people. Mr. I Quail. Uh, you get a shout out and all these people are getting shout outs. Danka, well done. Uh, Jenny, thank you for the prime sub, by the way. Sorry, I completely missed that. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Um, if Jenny didn't get a shout out, can we get one, please? Uh, and Kelp Brenny needs a shout out. He got it right as well. And he's our community member of the month. So go follow Kelp Brenny. Go follow all these wonderful people because they support this show and support the channel. So go do the, the right thing and go check them out. Big lovings. Thank you, Jenny. Sorry, alert came off late, but there you go. Um, but yeah, give Jenny a shout out as well, because she, uh, she uh, that's two months on Prime. Thank you, Jenny. Greatly appreciated it. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> that's our first game. If you've got Alan Wake 2, by the way, and you've got the special complete edition, that actually comes free, so you don't need to get the DLC. Um, otherwise, it's not that expensive to get it. So there you go. Um, moving on to our next game this evening. Uh, this is a game that apparently a lot of people have been looking forward to because it's kind of a, a remaster in a way. I'm sure Dave will correct me if I've got this wrong. This came out last Friday on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox Series, X, S1 and PC. And I know for the life of me, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. But this is Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. Damn, I got it right. I might oh, be getting really? better at this, Dave. I might be getting better <laughs> at this. Let's go. If you want revenge... 
Then I'll help you get it. Humans need the will to survive at any cost. And those who lack that strength of will no longer deserve to live. It is the world's fate to be remade. Birth, death, then rebirth. Ruinous thunder! It's exceedingly unlikely that this could be the work of a human. A demon must be behind it. Astro, Demons and humans cannot coexist. Find the weakness in your heart and take advantage of it. After our parents passed away, it was my responsibility to keep me also safe. But having the power to summon demons isn't enough. I, Lilith of the Kadishti, shall return the world to its true form. We destroyed this and we could end their plans. Always such a shame when the prey is wary of their hunters. Oh. I never faced my own problems. No more. They won't abandon you. I still want my revenge and my freedom. Yoko? Your knowledge will serve. Its destruction is at hand. I have to do this. I have to save everyone. Interesting. There you go. Means absolutely nothing to me because I can't follow these <laughs> games whatsoever. Um, but I'm sure Dave knows a little, a far lot more than I do. Um, but I, I've it. probably read a little bit more about it to get an idea <laughs> of what it's about because I don't follow any of uh, Atlas's series at all. No. But yeah, this particular one, yeah, it's one of those sort of classic um, battles between angels and demons, as it mentioned in the trailer. I think in this one, like Lucifer has killed off um, God and there's now like a power vacuum in a. In, in, in the one world and like all the other demons are you know, vying for that throne your character seems to get sort of pulled into like a, an organization uh, he's linked i think he links with some demons who can use their powers but as part of this organization you've got to try and you know keep it all in check stop anyone uh you know, reaching that throne who shouldn't uh get there this particular release you know this, this is a newer version of the one that came out in 2021 yeah i think it was generally well received when it came out Although I think read that there was a few issues people had with like the storylines and some of the way that combat works. So this is this has got like a extra mode to it. It's it splits the story into an alternate path called the uh, calendar of vengeance. It's got like alternate events to the story. So you know it's just changing things that like trying to improve on the storyline, you know, giving you more characters to you know do stuff with, having them do different things. Yeah. So for fan for fans of the original, you know, there is something here to come back to. You can replay the story, but it will go a different way. Do different things to it say it looks all right but i think you've got to be a fan of uh you know atlas and their games to really yeah this. i don't follow them so this is one that'll just go uh you know straight over my head really yeah i mean i i like some of the persona games and i've played some of the persona games on um on stream i'm not a huge fan as people know <laughs> um but i wouldn't know what the hell i'm doing with this one to be honest I don't, this this doesn't grip me but i know this has got a huge Oh look! I just as I was going to say, huge fan base, and mm. Toys just exactly said the same thing. So yeah. I can see this probably doing really well. A uh, couple of reports that Nightbot is having issues. Oh, so bear with us, folks. Yeah, sorry. If shout outs and things aren't going. Nightbot's basically um, decided to have a night off. Bless it. So there we go. <laughs> we'll it works it. hard. Why not? It does work hard for it's us. Out for a drink and relax. I know, yes. Yeah. One <laughs> for those free drinks that Kelp Brenny's promised. Um, Lisa, what do you what do you reckon about these games? Are you, you yeah, I mean, looking at it, the combat and stuff, it look, kind of looks a bit like Bayonetta and like D Ooh. DMC, you know, like Devil May Cry kind of yes. kind of vibes. Which I would, I, I played Bayonetta and I really really like Bayonetta because um, she's a quite a, a, 
what's the word like a retro female character um yeah. you know and, and i've actually cosplayed her quite a few times as well because i've got the glasses and the hair and stuff so yeah she's pretty cool to cosplay she's got the guns and her feet and stuff but she's she's also right. in the shoes um but yeah it's given me those kind of vibes just with like the the anime twist on it as well like someone said in the chat it's obviously a persona before it before it split off but also a little bit like genshin i think it was peaceful that said yeah. it yeah. um or like honkai um so yeah I, it might be something i would look into i've just started playing that wuthering waves um Ooh, which is like yeah, another uh gacha kind of game but um you can play it on your phone but then you can um play it through blue stacks which is like an emulator yes. yeah, and yeah. i've just been playing it offline i've not been playing it on on stream or anything mm. and i've been really enjoying it just to just have a little wonder around and and see what it's all about and yeah it seems yeah. like that kind of kind of vibe for me so something i'd play probably off stream there you go uh manic yeah. said Lisa, since you mentioned that, did you know that the series actually had Dante from Devil May Cry? Oh, no again? way. There you oh, go. that's sick. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's fun sick. trivia that's cool. for you. There you go. Yeah, uh, I like I, that. This seems like the thing reviewers would eat up. I'm going for a nine. So, folks, get your scores in. What do you think this got? This is Shen Megami Tensu 5 Vengeance, which came out last Friday. Um, I'll start with you, Lisa. What do you reckon? And I'll show some of the scores on the chat. I'm probably going to say about an eight for this one. I okay. Think. I, I think it's probably 10. got like a yeah, I think it's probably got a big fan base which will probably like kick it up a bit. Um but it's not quite up there if you know what okay. I mean. It's kind of in the middle, no more than the middle. More mm. than the middle. Okay. Uh Manic says an 8 as well. Agrees with you. Uh Will says a 9. Uh let's have a look. Let's scroll up. Uh Kylie said yeah, yeah, 9 mainly because of the fan base. Oh, um uh, I love the fact that Johnny said one. That's two ones now. It's brilliant. I love it. We love you, Johnny. You're amazing. Uh, Danka says a nine. Bondi says a seven. Gilfly says 7.5. Tomo says 7.5. Kelt Brenny says 6.5. Uh, Manic said eight. Pete said seven. Ben said 7.5. And I think that's all for now. Uh, Dave, what say you? I'm going to try a nine. This is usually pretty popular. Okay, going for a nine. Okay, Flame is saying an eight. Ben is saying a 7.5. Folks, this is your last chance to get your scores in, to get a shout out. Uh, Sawyer said an eight. Thank you, Sawyer. Uh, want to carry on with Persona 3 now. Oh, he's got to put Will in the mood to carry on with Persona 3. Um, this is Shin Megami Tensu 5 Vengeance, which came out last Friday on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox Series, XS1 and PC. And if there are no more guesses, I can tell you that this whopping nine out of ten. Wow. Yeah. Nine okay. out of ten on average, folks. So okay. um, there you go. So 0.5 more than Alan Wake 2. So congratulations to everyone who got that right. And I'm going to say this now because I missed the last time. Well done, Kylie, because she got it right. She got it right on the last one. And I bloody missed it. Typical uh -huh. of me. I missed it. So there you go. People just eat this up. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So there you go. Uh, we're going to get all those shout outs as best as we can while Nightbot absolutely fucks the chat royally. But we'll do, <laughs> our um, do our best to get those shout outs. So bear with us, folks. Um, and if not, we'll just do a load later if we can get it working. Sweet. I would get that right on a night that Nightbot is hung over. Yeah, I know. It's typical, isn't it? It's Sod's law that that's happened. Uh, oh, there you go. I can't get into them at all personally. Uh, you're like me, mate. I can't. I can't do that. Damn, Kylie, two for two, and I'm zero for zero. I better leave. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, Will is asking, Dave, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty good, thank you, mate. How about yourself? Oh. There you go. Uh, I would like to say that I do not consent to Nightbot, uh, to uh, Nightbot clapping me. It hasn't taken me out of date. Dude, I don't know whether you should say, use the term clapping, because that's sometimes used for a different meaning. Just put it out. <laughs> um just putting that out there. Um, so let's talk a bit of gaming news. Now, the reviews have actually already started dropping for this as of today, but we will be talking it on next week's show. It comes out on Friday. Yes, the long-awaited Elden Ring DLC drops Ooh. on Friday. Um, Elden Ring itself has sold now nearly 25 million copies since its release nearly over two years ago. Two years! two years ago right um however for those that are looking to play it mm. you might need to make sure that you've actually kind of defeated a certain boss because they've calculated that more than two-thirds of the player base um 
on PS5 and Xbox Series X. And more than only 30% of players, only like 38% on Steam. Yeah, 38% on Steam, but two thirds on PS5 and Xbox will not be able to play the DLC because they haven't defeated the boss in the game that will then lead to the DLC. Now everyone's going, but I've completed the game. Mm -hmm. You may have completed the game, but there's actually a, another boss that is basically optional uh, called uh, Moog, if Moog. I got that right. Yeah, Moog. Right. Yep. Lords of Blood. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't actually defeated that, you need to defeat them before you can start the DLC. And from the stats, it basically shows that basically a lot of people are not going to be able to play this on Friday. So you've got a few days, people. You need to do this. So do we think this is a weird thing that they've not tied it to a main game boss and tied it to an optional boss? Or do you think this is quite clever to make people play it more so then they can get to that content? What do you think, Dave and Lisa? Oh, I think from software you usually make things a, a little bit obscure in their games. I can't remember how easy it was to access DLCs in their previous games. But yeah, it doesn't really surprise that they've done it this way. And it's, it's a good excuse to get you to go and um, you know, explore the world a bit more. So you say it's an optional mm. boss, but you know, not mm -hmm. just that. there's so many optional things in the game that you can just miss completely. You don't there's so much you don't have to do if you mm. explore. There's so much there to find. It was awesome. Mm. It's a great marketing ploy, isn't it? It's a, it's a good yeah. publicity son in a way because what is it they say? Like even bad publicity is still publicity isn't it yeah. so um everyone knows even people that don't play elden ring particularly know that, that it's like what 68 percent of people can't actually play the game because they haven't completed that particular boss so it's it's getting it out there it's getting that clickbait going so it's actually really clever because it'll, it'll get mm. more people to stream it this week because everyone will be like hyping it up uh for yeah. friday um i think it's quite clever really honestly yeah good job some of the chat said uh hard as fuck boss but it's clever but that's the reason why it's that boss. Clever move, says Danka. The amount of people I saw on Twitch this week already streaming Elden Ring means they're doing a good job of getting people to play it. Uh, mm -hmm. ugh, I hate off lots of fun, but clever girl. Soft. Yeah, there you go. Um, someone's pointed out that I never gave you your shout out, Dave. Oh, yes. You did forget. Yeah, I didn't. Do you know what? And I, I did as well. Very, apparently, <laughs> Nightbot started working again. So, and so Jesse has given you your shout out. If you want to give Dave a shout out, exclamation Dave in the chat. But Dave is not actually a streamer, so we can't shout out his channel. So to make up for it, <laughs> try and find inventive ways to shout Dave out. So, Dave, how would you like your first shout out of the evening? Let's uh, get it into spinning on the chair, mate. You haven't got okay. the dogs this week, have you? So you went yeah, well, the head as you spin. The dogs are not here. The dogs are not here. I've seen this bit before. Right, you're not seeing this. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing a fucking handstand, sorry. I'll smash my settle. There we go. <laughs> Dave! There, you go. there you go. Even Tomo's shouting in the street. There you go. Tomo's That's leaned out his window. The dogs. Yes, I had I had Mojo and Pixie here last week. So because they were behind me, if I'd done that, I would have knocked the dogs over and I didn't want to do that. So cartwheel Aww. next week, you know. Here we go. Anyway, let's move on to small... need to <laughs> you do not want to see me twerk. <laughs> I'll wait for Friday. You can do that on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've got to wear that certain thing that we're not. I was to gonna with. say, I was literally just about to say that. Are we gonna tell people what you want to no, be wearing? No, no. We've got to get okay. the last the last three tickets have got to go. If the last three tickets go, I've got to do a forfeit. So if we yeah. sell out Friday, I've got to do a forfeit. I'm not gonna say what it is. Um so let's move people. on to our next couple of games. <laughs> oh my god, air quotes are the best. Yes. Been there, done mm. that. It's not a good thing to do. Oh what yeah, shouting out on the street. Oh god. Okay. Our next two games are quite linked together um, because they are both remasters um, from the same kind of thing. We are going to take each game individually. We'll start with the first one. This came out on Friday also for PS4, 5, Switch and PC. And this is Monster Hunter Stories mm. Remaster. Let's have a look at this one and i hope i've got the right one. Yes, here we go. Here's a trailer for this one. The time has come to share with you News that's bleak but sadly true. I'm talking of the fell black light. A spreading darkness. Endless night. The environment's changing and the monster population's taken a nosedive. Black grass. Rampaging monsters. What do you know of this corruption? 
this so-called black mist is actually the black blight, then there most likely be a blighted monster nearby too. Looks like this whole village has been blighted! Do we know what the blight is or why it's eating away at the world? No. But we know that it attacked our home. And that it must be destroyed. The kinship stone commands the might to purify this foul black blight. And we're gonna stop the black blight! <laughs> And monsters easy enough, but other humans are a different story. Hunters and riders. Like, they both respect and live with monsters. They're the same that way. I've been waiting my whole life for this. I want to help my friends. Everyone. But right now, evil is growing in power. Soon, this whole world shall be devoured. Yeah, we got claws for concern. Rather's blighted. You can use it to stop the blight. But I'm curious about this kinship with monster stuff. So I was hoping you could show everyone what it means to be a rider. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Monster Hunter Blight. I mean, Monster Hunter Stories uh, remaster. People keep going on about Blight. Blight, um, let's have a look. What we got scores-wise so far. Um, let's have a look. Uh, just scrolling down. Uh, eight from Pete. Eight from Sawyer. Eight from Tomo. Apparently Duchess has been streaming this. Our friend Duchess, who's going to be there on Friday. Uh, Danka, 7.5. Ben, 8.5. Uh, scrolling down. Bondi says an eight. 1.5, not for me. I'm not two years old. <laughs> um, seven Mickey Mouse impressions out of 10. People saying it sounds like Mickey Mouse. Kelp Brenny, seven. Will, seven. Flame, 7.5. Um, Dave, tell us about this remaster before we get into more scores. Yeah, so they've got a serious blight problem going on in this one. <laughs> Clearly. It's a, uh, a remaster of the 2017 game that was originally out of the uh, Nintendo 3DS, but they're now uh, you know, redone it slightly, improved the graphics and everything, and brought it to a few more platforms. This is a spin off from the main series. This is this is doing a turn based combat instead of real time, like you're yeah. probably more used to. Um, and in this one, it's not just about just you know, hunting the monsters and defeating them, you've also got the opportunity to sort of, um, sort of I think, breed them and then yeah, they can fight with you on your team. And there's, I think there's a mechanic as well, sort of pass traits between different monsters. So you can try and make one even better than the rest by you know, giving it more positive uh, traits to use in the combat. It looks okay as far as these games go. I can't have ever got into the Monster Hunter franchise at all, but it is massively popular. So I bet this will do pretty well with a, a lot of people. Yeah, I, mm. look, I, I've played some of them and they're okay. Mm -hmm. More the modern ones, more than anything. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, which was the Switch only title, and then obviously Monster Hunter World. But not really. It's again, it's not really my thing. But I know a lot of people love these games. Um, mm. Lisa, what your your thoughts on this? I'm the same, to be honest. Um, I feel like this one is like it's like what um, Johnny said in the chat. It's kind of going backwards a little bit it's kind of like yeah. what you would see on um, a ds or something <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um but yeah it's not really something i would i, I made up by watching it i watch like a mod for a couple of people that play quite a lot of monster hunter mm. um and it's okay to watch like say monster monster hunter rise is is interesting to watch but yeah this one wouldn't really grab me at all i don't think no i think the reason they're probably putting these out is as soy said they've announced the new monster hunter game and apparently that's been showcased at gamescom in august mm. the chances are they're building up the hype Mm -hmm. by remastering these games and, and getting them out um yeah i quail said a 7.5 ufa dufa 7.5 the safety zone uh uh danka says yeah it was a 3ds port yeah it was a 3ds port monster Hunter rise wasn't it uh i do like a good monster Hunter game yeah i can take it or leave it that's the way i am um let's get some scores uh dave we'll start with you this time what do you reckon this got let's go with a 7.5 7.5 okay and Lisa? Yeah, I went with 7.5 as well. I wrote that down. Okay, 7.5. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, 
Retro Faith has just raided us. Hello, Retro Faith. The amazing journalist. How are you, lovely? Hope you're well. Um, thank you so much. Welcome in, Raiders. I am middle-aged gamer guy, but you can call me Mags. And this is Tuesday Night Gaming Chat, where we talk about all the latest games, news, and reviews in the last seven days or so. And we are talking right now about the Monster Hunter Stories remaster. I uh, hope you well. Hope you had a great stream. I hope you're playing all the retro games. Yeah. That you do so. There you go. Um, anybody else, folks? Get your scores in chat. You may win a shout out. Um, this is Monster Hunter Stories Remaster, which came out last Friday on PS4, 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. If there's no more scores, I'm going to unveil what it is. And this does not score as highly as our first two games, but gets a decent, and a lot of people guess this, 7.5 out of 10. Hey. See? So our guest gets a shout out. Yeah. Finally. Go. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Tickets. Finally got one. Get your tickets to Rock on. Go follow mm -hmm. Lisa on Twitch. Go follow her Twitter and her Instagram. Go do it. Dave will do your shout out in a minute. And then all these other wonderful people that got it right. So it's like I got robbed by the point five every time. Uh, Kylie's <laughs> on the roll. Well done. That's free for free. Um, because we sometimes we have people that get them all right one week and then not the other. So this is going really well. So yeah, a 7.5 dank is like God. Damn it, I thought this was going to be higher. Uh, Ben's like, I am all over the place tonight with the scores. I think it's a good one tonight because no one can really guess it. It's it's quite all over the shop. So there you go. Congratulations to everyone. We will attempt to get shout outs as Nightbot is slowly kicking back in. And for all those that have, uh, have been on an ad break, uh, welcome back because you've just got back from the ad break. There you go. If you missed it, Monson uh, Stories got 7.5. There you go. Now, um, Dave, how would you like your shout out? Well, Lisa wants to see you twerk, didn't she, sir? Hey. Hey. Yes, let's do it. Come on. Last time I twerked, <laughs> you had to hide your eyes. And then I managed to catch you instead of finished. And then you moved. Do you remember that? That came up in a clip the other day. Did it? I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I blocked it. On it Jenny's memory. channel. Jenny's here. I was twerking for someone. And then you hid your eyes. I said, I'm done. And then you like that. And then it was like, ooh, there you go. Soul Strike, thank you for the follow. Good to see you. Right, okay, I'm twerking. Hi, Soul. You, you lot, you lot are getting this. Full barrel. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking your shirt off. It's serious. Mm -hmm. You've got to arch your back and push your bum out, apparently. Arch my I've back heard. and push your bum out, like that. Yeah. Yeah, right. like, yeah. and then, and then wiggle. Yeah. Guys, hey! <laughs> <laughs> do it up and down not side to side that sounds really weird there you go you're getting it there you go <laughs> that was so worth nice. it Ben's like oh my eyes and blind yeah. for anyone that hasn't gouged their eyes out yeah yeah, yeah. Gary, yeah. Everyone, everyone in my stream is like what the heck is going on <laughs> anyone who's not vomited on the floor that was a wiggle I can't remember twerk wiggle oh, there that's you go. Hilarious. my eyes cannot unsee that no and someone's probably clipped that are you wearing a yep. nappy or was it just a large ass? It's just my <laughs> large ass. It's got dunk in the trunk. TNG. Dunk in the trunk? Trunk in the trunk. What am I saying? Junk in the trunk? I don't know. <laughs> junk in the trunk. That's the one. That's the one. Peaceful. Bro, know. my mother's on this app. Don't blame me. Blame Lisa. <laughs> and Dave. Here you go. Mag learned that in prison. True story. <laughs> Not been to prison ever. There you go. Dump truck. Okay. All right. Yeah. So moving on from that uh, horrific, <laughs> yeah. uh, horrific display yeah. of arse jiggling, um, let's move on to Amazing. our next game, which, as I said, was the first of two. Because not only did they do Monster Hunter Stories Remaster, but this is already out on Switch and PC. It came out in 2021, but has now finally landed this Friday on PlayStation. And this is Monster Hunter Stories 2. Wings of Ruin. And I'll tell you what ruined your eyes was my ass right then. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Our world is not headed for disaster, as you say. The Exalted One's awakening is simply the first step towards the birth of a brand new world. Everything will be destroyed to be born anew. We're going to finish the work that Red started. We won't let you awaken it. I get it that you want to protect Ratha. But all you're doing is making him suffer. Ratha here is the one paying the price for your selfish obsession with the Nergigante. Let's go, Rathi! Fire! It may be impossible to save the world without Ratha's help. Bonds of friendship between riders and hunters. It looks like the children really are our future. Look it up! Understood! I want this! So there you go, folks. This is the second of the Monster Hunter games. This is Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin, which also came out last Friday. But as I said, was already out on PC and Switch a couple of years ago, but finally makes its way to PlayStation. So, Dave, this to me looks a bit more like the Monster Hunter we know and is less sort of cutesy. Yeah. I'm going to say horrible things, garbage than the <laughs> last one, because I don't care for that last one. Okay. But there Animated. you go. <laughs> But there you go. Um, but yeah, I'm right. This is a bit more. This is probably a bit more the core monster Hunter that we'd expect. Well, it's still following the uh, mechanics in the previous game. It, it looks better because it was, you know, built for you know newer systems. You know, it was only out three years ago on like Switch and PC, so you know, it would always look better than it would than the original 3DS one would. Um, but it's still turn-based. It's still got the monster breeding mechanics. They've sorted the blight. Blight there. Can't say the word blight. Problem out from the first yeah. game. I believe in this one, there's lots of uh, creatures disappearing around the world. And you're on a quest to find out who or what is behind these disappearances. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, it is, you know, it'll play the same as the previous game. Yeah, it's a follow-on mm -hmm. follow for that you know, sub-series of the Monster Hunter you know, world. It, again, it looks okay. It does look better than the first one. But yeah. you know, if you're not into Monster Hunter, it's probably not going to really swing you. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, same, same as what Dave says, really. I'm pretty sure I did see Meowth at the end of that, though. I don't know if you guys caught that. There was a little Meowth, in the, and I was like, yeah. mm, that, that looks a bit familiar. But, yeah, no, it's, it's again, it's not really anything I would want to play. But, obviously, mm. it's got a following. So, you know, I, I'd say it's probably going to get about an eight. Okay. All right. Don't Lisa's me. going for an eight. Uh, we'll see what mm -hmm. other people have said in the chat. Gilfly says an eight as well. Uh, 8.5 from Tomo on this one. Uh, I saw Danka said generally this game did better than the last one. So I think he said, I think he said an eight. I can't find it. Yeah, there you go. No, this better. Ben says a 7.5. Manic said an eight. Sawyer said an eight. Bondi said a 7.5. Uh, folks, get your scores in. Dave, what say you? I'm going to try an eight as well for this one. Going for an eight yeah. as well. Kelp Brenny is saying a seven. Kylie's like under pressure to see if she can get four for four. She's like, oh, I'm going to say eight. <laughs> it's better. Uh, Dave says, Mag's twerking, minus five, but the game. <laughs> I'd, I'd rate myself lower than uh, minus five. Uh, Flame, an eight. I call eight. Everyone's at will, an eight. Lots of people saying eight here. Uh, Rep Kyles, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. Um, Hi, there you go. One of Lisa's. Yeah. Lovely people. Um, so um dave did i ask you i did ask you you didn't i said eight hey you did everyone's going for an eight aren't they all right yeah. folks last chance if you haven't got your scores in this is monster hunter stories 2 wings of room which is out on playstation already available on pc and switch and has been for a couple of years which came out last friday jig jesse's like god i hope it's a four um miss ginger ninja hello how are you lovely good to see you uh I can tell you, folks, this did do better. Johnny says, I hate dragons. One out of ten. Go on, Johnny. <laughs> um, I can tell you this did do better than the last one. And this did get 
an eight hey. out of ten. So can we get a yeah. shout out to our wonderful guest, Lisa? Oh. There you go. <laughs> and a lot of shout outs to do in the chat. Congratulations to everyone. Uh, Sawyer, do for Sawyer's shout out, exclamation gamer guide. Go follow the gamer guide, amazing magazine. Go check it out. Everyone else, there's all the all Lisa's um, uh, socials and the event that she's putting on at RawCon. You can get your tickets now. Um, there you go. There's a link for the Gamer Guide. Everyone else is going to get their shout outs. Go give them a follow. Go give them support. Go do it. Shout out Dave with exclamation Dave. Darth Blinky. Hello. I know Darth Blinky. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, so Kylie is four for four so far. Hi, Darth. She's winning. She's winning at the moment. Uh, we will have more games coming up very shortly, but let's do Dave's shout out. You can join in by doing exclamation Dave in the chat. Dave, how do you want your shout out? You can do your uh, walk on from the side of the screen, mate. Let's go okay. with that one. All right, let's do that. <laughs> These are amazing. This is the best part. <laughs> Don't you know it? Here we go. <laughs> Very Jesus nice. Freaking... <laughs> Sorry, did that make you jump? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I'm so used to doing that. that. Doesn't scare me anymore. No, he's so used oh, to it. That poor jump scared me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh God, I'm jump scaring the guests. I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so that's yeah, fine. let's. Oh God, Lisa, don't encourage him. I've always said, Mag, walking off screen is the best part of the show as well. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the I meant the shout outs. I swear. Uh, it was the best part. And now the jump scare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dave needs to do a shout out to Mag. No, no, I, I don't guess him. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe one day. I never thought that Mag screaming Dave's name would scare Lisa. I mean, depends where I'm you are in the world. That. <laughs> yeah. I, want that, I want that yeah. jump scare in my life. I love that. I'll send it to you. So if someone's got they clips it. Thank you, Jesse. Has clipped it. There you go. Oh, we'll someone's send it to it Amazing. Lisa. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Cool. There you go. Um, congratulations to everyone who got that right. Eight out of ten. We have still got three more games uh, to talk about, including the horror game that came out today, Still Wakes the Deep, and the Elder Scrolls Online expansion, Gold Road, which came out on consoles today. But um, let's talk a little bit more gaming news, and then we've got a very special announcement to make. Um, so, uh, obviously, at Summer Games Fest, it was announced that the brand new Astrobot game is coming to playstation which i'll be honest was the best game of the whole stage uh state of play uh station playstation showcase mm -hmm. there you go again yeah. words not working um it looks absolutely amazing apparently they've said there is over 80 levels in this game okay Ooh. 80 levels it's been announced however the developers have also noticed uh stated that pretty much after launch um they will release a ton, and they're saying a ton, of free DLC. And this is mainly going to be comprised of challenge levels, plus some other bits and pieces and other kind of levels that will be added. Um, and there is a lot of characters that will be um, free to play, as well as all this. So all the extra levels and everything is going to be free. And apparently there's going to be a lot of well-known faces from iconic PlayStation games, including Kratos oh, from God of War. Yeah. And numerous other characters, because literally everyone that's got a PlayStation like game or title has gone to the devs and gone, we want to be in this. So they've got yeah. some that were already agreed before they announced it, and they've got some that they're now working on to get this out. So this is going to be really cool, and I'm really looking forward to this game. But if the main game that you've got to pay for has got 80 levels, and then they're chucking all this stuff in for free, this sounds like a potential game of the year material or bargain or possibly amazing game, couldn't it? What do we reckon? Oh, easily, mate. I mean, if they can keep the standard that they set in uh, Astro's Playroom, which launched the PS5, then yeah, this could be absolutely brilliant. Because I, I still think that game's the best um, you know, demo for the, con the dual sense. The controller, can do. yeah. Yeah, yeah. nothing else has really made good use of that, to be quite honest. Other games should make, make it do stuff with it, but no yeah. near as good as Astrobot, not at all. Mm. So definitely looking forward totally to Totally agree. Yeah. Lisa, you're looking forward to this one? 
Yeah, I've actually played this one. So yeah, yeah, I have played the PlayStation Five Astro Bot. So yeah. I really enjoyed it as well. Like all the all, collecting all the old PS One and all the old equipment that you used to get as well yeah. was, was a massive trip for me because obviously I'm a PlayStation girly at heart. That's where I came from originally. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three. So yeah, very very excited, and I will get my PS Five very shortly. It's it's happening. It's gonna happen. I can't wait. Yeah. So yeah, excited to play. Excited to play that going to be awesome you know what you've got to get as well because you've got to get you got so because we both have very much like we like purple both Lisa oh yes so you've got to get the purple playstation controller you've got to do it even though it looks blue yes. on camera but it does purple. look blue on there but i have seen oh, no. the, i have seen the purple yeah. one before yeah no, no definitely got it. it's got to be yeah. done it's got to be done mm -hmm. so i still need the sides to go on mine i haven't done that but you know uh, i didn't really want to waste 70 quid on a, two pieces of plastic so we'll leave that don't for blame a bit. <laughs> yeah. there you go um Okay, folks, we'll have more news for you a little bit. But now is the time. We have quite a large announcement to make. For those who don't know, and where have you been, folks? We run a gaming event called Timeless Gaming Convention, which is taking place on the 14th of August at Europe's largest arcade, Arcade Club Berry. And if you have no idea what it is, have a look at this. Folks, Timeless Gaming Convention is taking place in 57 days time. Yes, yeah, so less than eight weeks. Um, we have a ton of stuff for you. We have not only the whole use of Arcade Club, four floors of retro gaming heaven and the latest consoles and the latest arcade machines, pinball machines, air hockey, basketball nets, the lot for you to play free over 11 hours. But we have two stages. It is our biggest Timeless gaming convention ever we have two stages we have a gaming challenge stage where we have a tekken 8 tournament a just dance 2024 tournament with official just dance people that appear in the game we've got our friends at bullying doing a tournament we've got loads of other gaming competitions to announce over the next couple of weeks but we also have our main stage uh where we have got keynote talks from the amazing ashens we got jason from the gadget show we finally got to announce it Yes, Jason, the amazing Jason from The Gadget Show will be there, our opening keynote. This guy owns the Back to the Future DeLorean, has starred in Assassin's Creed games and has got a new film coming out. So he's going to be talking about that and he's going to be there all day. You can have your photos with him, meet and greet with him. He's agreed to be there all day, which is awesome. We've got DJ Slopes with his gaming quiz. We have got our gaming legends panel with people that have worked on games from across the last 40 years including Helldivers 2, Cyberpunk, Gears of War, Sonic Team Racing, Theme Park, Crisis, uh, just to name a few. And we have got our content creator panel with loads of fantastic content creators, such as our guest next week, Mav. Mav, who's on the show next week, will be on that panel, as well as Games Mistress flying over from Norway, especially. We have got Melanin Gamers running their... Um, panel with more content creators and talking about diversity in streaming and how to turn it into a proper, proper career for yourselves. And Debug Magazine will be there showcasing uh, a couple of brand new indie games. Debug also will have their indie game area where you can play up to 18 brand new indie games. Some of them never been at a show ever before. We've got Geek Retreat Berry also there playing with the latest tabletop and board games, everything from Pokemon to Warhammer you can try before you buy. And we've got our amazing content creator lounge supplied by the Gamer Guide, which Lisa will get to enjoy with some free pizzas and some uh, free drinks and bits and pieces and get to network with some other wonderful content creators because we've got some of your mm -hmm. favourite content creators attending, over 100 of them attending. And thanks to Soy and his team for sorting all this out because he's awesome. And not only that, we have tons of exhibitors 
We got people selling gaming merch, Funko Pops, D and D stuff, clothing. We've got peripherals such as headsets, keyboards, mice. We've got a load of different stands that you can buy stuff from and buy your geeky merch, pixel art, all this sort of stuff. And we are keeping the announcements rolling because, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to announce something quite big for us tonight. And we've managed to keep this under wraps for quite some time. But we finally did it because we got the email to say, to say we can do it. So who's haven't seen it? Exclamation timeless, timeless gaming convention. We are very proud to announce. Last week, we announced that Pixel Addict magazine were joining us as one of us, our partners, alongside the Gamer Guy, Debug, a wonderful charity everyone can and group retreat. But I'm going to skim down to the bottom because if you go to the bottom, we are very proud to announce that our headline partner is Sneak Energy, ladies and gentlemen. Sneak Energy have agreed to be our headline partner for the event. So you're probably saying, what does that mean for me? Well, I can show you exactly what it means for you lovely people because not only Sneak will be there with a stand so that you can get some free samples and free stuff. So everyone that turns up will get some free stuff as they come in. Um, the Sneak Bunny will be there, ladies and gents. The Sneak Bunny will yeah. be going around the event. You can have your photos taken. Um, you can buy some stuff off their stand. Uh, VIPs, we are giving you some free sachets and a Sneak Shaker to go in your goodie bags. So we're adding the copy of Pixel Addict, the copy of debug the amazing spider verse figurines there is over 67 quids worth of free stuff gone into the vip bag so far and we have more stuff to announce content creators are going to get a load of free sneak in the uh, content creator lounge and not only that sneak are going to give us a load of other prizes to give away for the competitions for like tekken mario kart just dance etc but for the cosplay competition, they are donating us two free tickets for MCM Comic Con London. The top prize for the cosplay competition, courtesy of Sneak, is two tickets to MCM Comic Con in London in October at Excel. So if you want to go to Comic Con for free, get dressed up. Join in the cosplay competition because that is courtesy of our headline partners, Sneak. This is probably one of the biggest partners we have had in the history of Timeless Gaming Convention in the three years. So we want to say a massive thank you. They are also going to be running competitions on their socials where you could win some standard tickets. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, you might want to check out their socials. But if you don't want to wait, time to get your tickets, folks, because everything I just mentioned is 20 quid just to get in to RK Club on a normal day is 18 pounds. So for all that, all the exhibitors, all the talks, all the competitions, all the fun, all the frolics, plus the DJ sets after seven o'clock in the evening, because yes, we've got DJ sets as well on the second stage. It is 20 quid. We are doing discounts uh, for tickets for five people or more. You can do the VIP experience, the VIP bag, which I've just mentioned which is a limited edition VIP bag with the magazines, with the sneak stuff, with the Zotec figurines, plus loads of other stuff that we're going to be announcing. Plus you get a free lunch voucher, so you can have a lunch on us. You get 10% off all our merch. You get in one hour earlier. You get in at 10 a.m. Plus you get a lanyard, and if you want to take part in any of the competitions, you hold up that lanyard and you get on stage before anybody else because that's what VIPs deserve. You get a family ticket, two adults, two kids, 50 quid saves you a tenner. Kids under five go free. And if you're a lone parent, you don't have to buy a family ticket. You can get additional child's ticket for a tenner as long as they are accompanied by an adult. So that saves you 20 pound from a family ticket. Not only that, we have some amazing, amazing content creators that support us. So, Go check out Lisa's channel because she can give you 15% off tickets. All of those tickets you can get 15% off. We've also got Jesse and Paulie can offer you 15%. Uh, we have got the amazing Kylie and Pete from Rapid Reviews give you 15%. The Gamer Guide, Kelp Brenny. Uh, who else we got in chat? Oh, my God. 
Uh, is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? I'm, I'm, if I've missed anyone, I apologize. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think I've covered everyone. I think for now. So all those amazing people can get 50. Uh, Ashens. Yes, Ashens. Go see Ashens. Get 15% off all those tickets. And ladies and gentlemen, VIP, more than 60% of the allocation of VIP has sold. And on July the 14th, VIP will close. So you have less than a month to get your VIP tickets. After that, you cannot get VIP tickets. So do it. And content creators, if you have not already applied, go get applied for a free content creator pass. We literally only have 20 passes left. If that, you have until Thursday, 9 p.m. Look at the good looking fella there. He looks familiar, Johnny, doesn't he? Look at that. Um, go get your tickets. You can find out all about all the latest things. There's the wonderful Jason Bradbury. All the things we've announced, go on the website, Pixel Addict and Paul Monaghan, who's going to be our guest presenter for our uh, Gaming Legends panel. We've got the Pixel Artist. We've got Format are going to be there. Our exclusive 2024 merch, which is also limited edition. Don't wait until after the event to get it. Order it. If you've got a VIP ticket, you get 10%. Order it in advance. Collect it on the day. Because the prices for that limited edition merch will go up after the event. So many reasons for you to go to Timeless! Exclamation Timeless for more details. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the sales pitch. Oh my god! <laughs> I <deserve> a <laughs> fucking drink. Yeah, Cheers. I was going to say, get a drink. That was incredible. I don't think you breathed throughout the whole of that. <laughs> that was amazing. I think my heart stopped as well. <laughs> yes, my that. whole body just died while doing that. <laughs> we go. Anyway, so yeah, folks, more reasons to go to uh, mm -hmm. Timeless. Johnny's got the official NerdCon sticker. Anyone wants it, seventy-five quid. They are rare as rocking horse shit. So that's what the event was called the first year, and then we rebranded because you know NerdCon. Yeah, it was NerdCon. Then it turned out someone else already owned that name in Germany, and we didn't realise. Whoops. Um, so no. Go. Yeah, there you go. Sucks I, to be. I did notice that you had. Um... Is it enhanced aim? Yes, enhanced aim. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. They got. They, yeah. they gave me my kitty ears. I got my kitty really? ears from them. Yeah. So they're really they're cool. Some, I've, 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 yeah. I know a few of them. Yeah. They're going to. Um, Scott's very kindly give us some prizes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they will be I'm selling awesome. keyboards, mouse mats, microphones, mm -hmm. headsets a lot yeah. at the show. So go check yeah. them out. They're awesome. Um, mm -hmm. whew, right. Should we carry on with some games? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, we should give yourself a, give yourself a minute. Just just chill. Well, <laughs> and I was gonna chill. Yeah, I was totally gonna chill. However, this next game might have me on edge because I will be well, playing yeah, this true. on Thursday. Right. I am Ooh. playing this Thursday at 9 p.m. This came out this today. This is really good. Yeah. This is on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series and X and S, and is on Game Pass as of today. This Ooh. folks is still wakes the deep i've been very hyped for this let's have a look at this let's go you bring the police to my door to my rank uh, I, I can sort this right i just need time don't you answer me back you're fired you hear me fired jesus gregor gregor Yeah, that looks good. It looks scary. Yeah. I, I, I Me scary. and Dave have been closely following this ever since it was announced last year, and I can't wait for this. Um, mm. I know a couple of people already started playing it. Sawyer's obviously playing it and reviewing it and stuff. I know Sophie's oh, nice. not here tonight. Literally started playing it tonight. And she's like, I mm. won't give you any spoilers. Um, so, Dave, tell us a little bit more, because this is set on a 1970s Scottish oil rig, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, that's right. Out in the North Sea, December 1975. You're a 
character. He's about to uh, get sent off the uh, off the oil rigs. I think he's, he had some trouble with the police back on the uh, the mainland. He's got meant to be going back to sort out, but just as about to leave, shit happens. <laughs> some massive yeah. explosion. He gets thrown off the thing and then dragged back on by some people who save him. Uh, but then strange things start happening on the oil rig. You know, you, this, this strange substance starts appearing in places. You can hear all this screaming. Yeah, you know, it, it is all kicking off on there. You got to try and find a way to survive and escape. So I did start mm. playing this myself earlier because it launched today, and mm. so far, yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's it's a fairly linear horror adventure. You know, pretty yeah. narrative heavy. So you know, there's there's not like any paths to really take. It is just you know, go forward through the story, mm. see what horrors await you, and uh, you know, j- just try and get through it. But for what it's doing, it seems pretty good. Graphics look nice. Mm. Yeah, sound effects pretty good. Definitely want to, uh, you know, put headphones on for so you can, you know, mm. fully get immersed in it. But yeah, so yeah. far so good. It's it's uh, just pretty well with its sort of you know, sense of place as well, and like all the Scottish dialects you got going on in there, yeah. all, all the uh, the language and the swearing. Yeah, it reminds me of watching like Rab C Nesbit when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to love Rab C Nesbit. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 so, yeah. pretty pretty good so far. So yeah. Whether, whether some people think it's worth, I think like it's you know, 30 or 40 pounds since it's like quite a short, you know, linear adventure. You know, it, it, that's like another thing. It, everyone's different. But since it's on Game Pass, at least you yeah. can just jump in and try it. So whether that might, you know, upset you a bit that you can't like make lots of different choices and really replay it again. At least it's on Game Pass. You can just you know, download it, give it a go. It hasn't yeah. really cost you anything extra apart from the uh, subscription price. So yeah, mm-hmm. pretty good on there. There you go. Uh, Lisa, I get the feeling this is right up your street. Yeah, this is something I, I actually hadn't heard of it before. Um, before this show, I think I saw a couple of people playing it maybe today. Um, mm. but it does look it, it looks really scary. The, the thing is, for me, is I'm not a fan of boats and I'm not a fan of the sea, so it, this will I, what, the thing is for me when I play horror games, I get very, very immersed. So, yeah, this is going to be fun watching me play this if, if I play if I do stream this because I will je- definitely be scared of this. I'm not gonna lie, especially if there's like jump scares and monsters and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm excited to to have a go and see what it's like for sure. Yeah, apparently, mm-hmm. so there's a story mode to make it a bit easier. I will play it on whatever the recommended mode is on mm-hmm. Thursday. So if you do want to see me play this 9 p.m. Thursday on my channel, um, do come mm-hmm. and watch it. Um, watch me shit myself live on stream. Uh, <laughs> So, Way brown what, pants. <laughs> no, no pants, yeah, won't be my working pants, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> what, what, what do we reckon? Manic is saying an eight out of ten for this. So, I said a nine out of ten. So ben says a nine out of ten. Bondy says an eight. Uh, get your scores in, folks. You get your scores in, get it right. Good chat. Uh, green underscore hat. Hello, someone else that's coming to the Twitch meet on Friday. Great to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, not sure on this one. When in doubt, a seven, says iQuail. Guildfly said 8.5. Um, he says it's not that scary, to be honest. It's a little edgy. Uh, okay. I'm excited okay. to try this on Game Pass, says Apop. Uh, Flame yeah. says 7.5. Uh, Kylie says 7.5. It's a safe choice. Uh, Jenny, hello. How are you doing? Another Jenny. I don't know what the game is, so a 7.5. Uh, <laughs> hi, hi. hi, Jenny. How are you doing? Two, because no dragons. It gets one more than the last one. <laughs> Uh, Darth this Johnny's a vibe. <laughs> I, love, I love Johnny, he's great. Um, that changes things for me. I will stick with a 7.5. Um, Dave, I'll start with you on this one. What do you reckon? I'm gonna try a seven for this one. Seven, okay. Lisa, I was gonna go a bit higher because I think a lot of people are intrigued about this one a little bit more. I'm gonna say a nine, going for a nine, okay. For this All right, uh, mm. folks. Get your scores in. This is still Wakes the Deep, which came out today on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S. And it's on Game Pass today. Yeah. And if there are no more guesses, I could tell you that I was a little bit disappointed when I saw the first review that dropped. The first review that dropped from IGN, they gave it a 6 out of 10. Whoa. Okay. However, however... Some people enjoyed it a little bit more. That's why it got an average a 7.5. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So yeah. Not the dizzy heights that some people are expecting, but no. a 7.5 is good. I mean, yeah, it's, IGN complained it was too linear. And then what I thought was hilarious is they basically said it suffers from the, oh, I don't know where to go. So there is yellow paint to show me where I need to climb. But he oh, stated no. that there's an option where you can turn it off. But when he turned it off, mm-hmm. 
he didn't know where to go and got lost. So I'm like, well, either you have it or you don't. So I thought yeah. that review was a bit, uh, but there you go. Yeah. Bit of a dickish move by the review. So 7.5, folks. Um, congratulations to everyone who got it right. Shout outs are going now. Um, Dave, you said, what did you say, Dave? I said a seven, mate. You said a seven. I thought you were close. So you were just 0.5 off. But congratulations to everyone. Everyone who's getting a shout out now, go give them a follow. Go follow them, right? And not only that, I will give my own opinion on it on Thursday, okay? Because it might mm. be better than a 7.5. Sawyer is saying it's better than a 7.5. So we shall see. So there you go. Uh, let's move on to our next game. Another game that is coming in, uh, came out today, folks. Uh, <coughs> easy. This is out on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox Series, XS1, and Switch. And this is hashtag blood. Welcome to Hashtag Blood, a video game about social media, awkward high school dances, and a world ending vampire apocalypse. Assume the role of Becky Brewster a freshman transfer student turned unwitting vampire slayer. Explore Carpentersville, a quaint town with a vast underbelly of evil looks and deadly friends. Got a crowbar? Use it to get around faster, accessing shortcuts through the sewers. You'll make many friends, but only one you count as your bestie. Say hello to my little Brenda. Get help from your crafty neighbor, Corey, to upgrade Brenda with special attachments. Oh, this is cool. As a shield, stun enemies and parachute off ledges. Dig your way to hidden places with the shovel, unearth treasure, and root out pesky enemies. The grappling hook lets you repel past obstacles, break barriers, and collect hard-to-reach items. Train with your mentor, Christofferson, and unlock deadly finishing moves to vanquish your enemies in style. Expand your arsenal with ranged weapons. Nothing strikes a vamp straight in the heart like the precision of a number two pencil. Cherry bombs pack a big punch to get you out of a jam, or even open passageways. The enemies you'll face are a menagerie of mutated monsters, malfunctioning machines, and bloodsuckers of every ilk, each requiring unique tactics to defeat. Unsure how to eliminate a foe? Use that newfangled phone your dad gave you to snap a selfie pic and learn their weaknesses. Speaking of that phone, Purchase social media app is your lifeline to daily activities. Use it to make plans with friends, track your quest progress, and get helpful clues when you're stuck. But don't get too sucked into your feed. Those giant tech companies have ulterior motives. Be sure to stock up on school supplies and other necessities. You'll find these around town, at shops, hidden chests, and that shifty looking dude in a trench coat. Ooh. The missions you'll face are a test of brawn and brains with many tricky puzzles to solve. But the biggest test of them all are those big baddie bosses, commanded by the vampire lord, Dragor. Life won't return to normal until you take him and his minions out. You must approach each boss with unique combat techniques that you've honed over the course of your adventures. Adventure awaits in Carpentersville. So grab a controller. Don't miss class. Get on that bus and kick some vampire. <laughs> Hashtag blood. The video game. Available now. That was a hell of a long advert. <laughs> Believe it or not, trailer. that was the shortest trailer I can find, and that was three minutes forty. Jeez. That's all like, everything you need to know, didn't it? No, and I, I know, thought yeah. the Monster Hunter stories trailers were fucking long, but there you go. Uh, Drew Nightmare, thank you very much for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. Welcome on Hi, in. Drew. Um, 
He's one of my uh, friends. Yeah. There you go. Um, Johnny says, not for me, one out of ten. Oh, he was doing so well, he managed to get to two earlier. But there you go. <laughs> Uh, Sawyer says a six on this one. Dave, tell people what this game is all about if the trailer didn't explain it well enough. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going for like, um, you know, sort of late 90s cartoons in the sort of vibe, the animation style. It's going, you know, sort of like Dexter's Lab that was mentioned in the uh, in the chat earlier. Yeah. It's going for those sort of, yeah. you know, type of cartoons. But it, look, it looks really cool. I like the, the animation they do with it, the attacks and stuff. It looks very good. It's also got a bit of a sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibe as well. Because yes. You're a yeah. late in the line of vampire hunters trying to stop a vampire apocalypse in a small town. Um, yeah. And it it's also gives me a few like Zelda vibes as well with some of the items that you can get to then access new areas. And it sounds like you'll be using them in some of the boss fights as well. So it's definitely got uh, an interesting mix of things to it. But it does look pretty cool. As I say, animation-wise, it looks pretty good. Cool. So, it, um, so it's one I hadn't really kept much of an eye on before. I kind of heard about it. Yeah. Watching that trailer and seeing it explain all the uh, yeah, the mechanics and stuff in it, it does look you know, pretty cool. One I might mm. give a go at some point. Mm. Okay. Lisa, your thoughts? Yeah, I was, was going to say the same thing. It's like Dexter's Lab, uh, Powerpuff Girls kind of vibe, which is kind of like the mm. 90s nostalgia kind of thing, which is cool. Um, it's, it's kind of like a rogues like as well, like, you know, Hades style. Yes. Um, where you're all over the map and you, you know you're using different grappling hooks and stuff like that to get around on the platform, which is quite cool. I quite like that kind of style of game. Um, I think it's quite looks like quite satisfying combat as well, um, and like you get loads of different like like you say like um, upgrades and stuff on your weapons. So yeah, I think it's something I would I would look into. I would probably play that. See, I yeah. I'd like this. Someone also said it looked very Cult of the Lammy, and I love Cult of the Lamb. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'd be well up for playing this. I'm not going to lie. Again, like Dave, kind of knew it existed, but didn't really know much until recently about mm. it. Um, but yeah, they should have eased up on the trailer a little bit because it feels like it, they sport it. But <laughs> folks, yeah. you've just joined us. If you don't know what we're doing, we don't review the games. We try and get you to guess the scores, and it's an average score, so it's not the exact score. Uh, we see if you agree with it or whether you don't. Um, so, what do you reckon this got? This was hashtag blood, which came out today. Uh, Lisa, I'll start with you this time. What do you reckon this got? I'm going to say 7.5 for this one. I think it's it's probably got a little, like, not a lot of people have probably heard of it, but it looks yeah. like something people might be interested in, uh, in looking at and reviewing. Okay. Johnny says, it was a social media nonsense muddled up in. What was it? A twin stick fighter game. Ridiculous. All it needed was guns and explosions. Bullet hell. <laughs> Kylie says, I'm going to play it safe 7.5. And Ben said mm. earlier, Whatever Kylie says, so he goes right seven point five then, because obviously Kylie's getting <laughs> them all right so far. Uh, yeah. Manic says a seven point five as well. Dave, what say you, good sir? Well, let's, let's uh, see if Kylie can stay on a roll. I'll, uh, I'll go with her score. Go with everyone's copying Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if she's got the uh, got the neck tonight. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, Jenny is going for an eight out of ten for this one, folks. This is your last chance. Get your scores in chat. Uh, this is for Hashtag Blood, which came out today. And is on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox Series, X, S1, and Switch. Kylie's like, oh, God, no pressure. Well, <laughs> you say that, but then when this got a 7.5. Hey. hey. Nice. The pressure's a little bit off, but then it might be back on. Congratulations. Literally, everyone was getting this right. So well, well done. Kylie. Well done. Um, Dave, you're going to get a shout out. Lisa, you're going to get mm -hmm. a shout out. Um, so there's a lot of shout outs going chat. There's a lot of people. One more, just one more. I know, should get a clean sweep. So there you go. Go follow Lisa's channel. Go check out all her social movies. Go book on the Raw event. That will all be there in chat very soon. There it is. There it is. Yep. Go do it if you want to get over to Cardiff. Uh, enjoy a really amazing gaming event that Lisa and Peaceful and a few of us are putting together. Go check it out now. Dave, mm -hmm. how do you want your shout out, good sir? I'll tell you what, go behind your chair and uh, jump up, mate. Okay. Done that right, one you ready, Lisa? <laughs> I'm not scaring you, okay? No, yeah, you won't, hopefully you won't scare me with this one. You're all right. Are you sure? Yeah. Sure. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Dave! Very nice. <laughs> yeah, no, Did no, you no. hear my knees I got, crack? I got loads of warning. I weren't expecting Nobody. you to shout it. There you go. I, I can't do cartwheels. I'll smash my sit up. Both of my knees just went like that, which is I heard um, that. Yeah, I did actually yeah. hear that. That's because I'm old. Um, there yeah. you go. 
Oh, yeah, thanks for agreeing. Cheers. Um, no, sorry. Be, all right. <laughs> no, 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 just yeah, because I'm, I'm saying. I went, I went on a park at the weekend with uh, with my niece, who's like 14, and she was like, she wanted me to go on the monkey bars. And I went to go, I jumped to the monkey bars, and as soon as I did it, my elbow popped, and my, and my shoulder popped, and I was like, oh, yeah, you ain't doing that again. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I might look younger, but Jesus Christ, do I feel older. <laughs> like, ouch. Yeah. Just restretch. There we go. Yeah. All right, folks, uh, some more gaming news for you. Um, the game that basically could potentially be on a lot of Game of Year lists uh, Hell Divers 2. We never stop talking about this. Is the, the game that just keeps on giving. Uh, the li latest patch literally landed. Um, there are a ton of updates, fixes, quality of life improvements that have been added. They've now officially added invite only lobbies. So people wanted private lobbies to play with their friends. That is now a thing in the game. There's um, certain buffs that they've added on certain weapons. To make those weapons a little bit better, everyone was moaning how can a giant chain gun not take down an armoured baddie? And it's like, right, we've sorted it, so that makes it easy if you've got that gun, that sort of thing. Um, they've updated um, the maps as well, so that when there's attacks taking place, you can see them taking place on the map, so you know where people and enemies are coming from. Um, there's weather updates, because people were saying, yeah, the weather was great, but some of it was so ridiculous that it just murder you on impact. So they balanced that out. So, you know, weather's not going to kill you that much now. Um, and basically patrols and their spawning have all been fixed because some of the patrols spawning just like literally just spawn on top of you and you're like, again, game over straight away. So they've added all that. I still need to play this. I have not played this and everyone's been raving about this. Um, Dave, mm. you've played a little bit of it, haven't you? Yeah, I did play a little bit of it when it first came out. Then I've just got distracted by all the other games that yeah. have come out since. So it's just finding the time to go back to it. And I know I need to because they keep adding more and more stuff to it. Mm. And it keeps sounding better and better. Yeah. So yeah at some point, I'll find some time to play it again. Yeah. Lisa, Helldivers 2. I haven't Get played it, but I've fan. watched a lot of people. Yeah, I've watched a lot of people play it. And I don't know if it's really for me, um, but... Yeah, I think I think it's interesting. I just, I don't know if it's one to stream a lot of the time because it's good mm. to play with your friends, but I don't think it sometimes comes across well on stream. Um, just because obviously you you're all in it, you know, you're all in the in the zone. Um, obviously it's it's based on like loosely off Starship Troopers, isn't it? Which is always a great yeah. a great little uh, reference which we all love. Um, everyone's doing their part. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll have a go of it, see what it's like. So I have been playing a, a lot more like uh, FPS games. I've been playing Mass Effect recently, so I've been enjoying that. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll go for Helldivers and have a look, see what it's about. Okay, we'll see. Damn. Yeah. So people are saying, why haven't I played it? It wasn't something that we were going to do when it came out on stream, and I've just not got around to it. And there's that, that much stuff now that's come. It's kind mm -hmm. of unless they do something quite big with it then i can't see me actually streaming this i might get around to playing it but it's probably not something i'm going to stream because i've just backlog yeah. i've got over 100 games on my backlog and it keeps getting bigger because I, I keep getting all these new games sent to me and then i never get around to finishing them so yeah it's not but um just not yeah. enough time is there unfortunately no i know no. I need a couple of it's, a, it's a streamer's problem in it they always they're always it like is. do i want to stream this game or do i want to enjoy it for myself yeah. <laughs> it's always the, it's always the thing and it is really difficult to pick out the games that i then want to complete and mm -hmm. do that and then once i set aside that i do go oh i will play that and then mm -hmm. it's been sitting there for a year going shit i've never played that mm -hmm. oh but something also new shinies come along so yeah. it, it's just like oh dear god so there you go uh yeah you need to clone yourself or something oh we'll see um mm -hmm. there you go so uh on to our final game of the night ladies and gents uh this actually came out on pc on the third of this month but as of today it's now on PS4, 5, Xbox Series X, S, and 1. And this is the latest expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online. This is Gold Road. Let's have a look at the trailer for this. Are we not doing the scores for that one? The Helldivers? May us more the other betray. No. Okay. We have no time to waste with mortal nonsense. <laughs> Warriors of Mirum, stand fast against Mora's minions. The staff of many paths was never meant for mortal hands. 
We are at a crossroads and must choose our path wisely. The devastated area is spawning dangerous beasts. Someone needs to answer for all this. Hey guys, folks, the latest expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online. This is Gold Road, which, as I said, came out two weeks ago on PC, but it's out today on PlayStation and Xbox. Dave, tell us a little bit more about this one, please. Yeah, so in this one, you've got a, uh, a new Daedalic Prince who we haven't seen before, but she, she's uh, burst into the, uh, the Elder Scrolls uh, storyline and uh, her followers are, uh, I think, trying to uh, unmake reality. So it's up to you and, uh, you know, everyone else who you're playing with online so you know try and stop her uh yeah. this one gives you a new area to go to called the west world well i think it's called uh which looks you know nice enough but it is you know more of the same stuff that you've been playing for like the last 10 years you know say new area new quests yeah. you know, lots more of the same sort of stuff to do it has got a new thing in for combat to do like magic called scribing where i think you get to you know tweak the sort of magic to your style a bit i think you've got to play and grind a bit to unlock all the relevant bits for this new um new play style but it sounds you know, interesting enough yeah as i say you get to mix and match the how the magic functions so that sounds interesting they've put in there uh but yeah i can imagine if you've been playing this game for like the last 10 years you're going to be ready for even more of it and even if you've even if you're fairly new to it you've missed some of the previous previous expansions i think the way they do like the the leveling in this for the enemies you can you know go into without without pl having played like the last 10 years of content you, know, you don't have to be like a massively over level character to get in there you can still you know get get in and play this and if you're a very recent player to the elder scrolls mm. online okay um ever played any elder scrolls online lisa mm -mm. No. Not, not not my not my bag unfortunately not <laughs> my sister no. plays it a lot not but mine, it's either. not really mine no <laughs> I've played little bits of it. I've never been a big fan, to be honest. Mm. I've played bits of it from time to time. Mm. But, you know. I feel, like, I feel like online games, you just lose so many hours in them. And I'm just like, I don't have the time as it is. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. The only oh. one I would love to do would be Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy XIV. But I yeah. know that I would just get lost in it completely. So I just haven't given myself that time. Maybe if I get lost on a Disney island for a, for a few years, I'll be yeah. able to do all those kind of games. But, yeah, <laughs> just, it just can't. I can't bring myself to do it. I watched my brothers play God of Warcraft for yeah. years, playing 11 hours straight, oh, and I'm like, I can't yeah. do this to myself. <laughs> there you go. You know what I mean? Kylie says, right, so ESO scores high, but not too mm. high, and it's really aging now, so maybe an 8 out of 10. So Kylie's trying to get 7 out of 7, because this is the last game. Yeah. Of the season. Okay, so we'll see if she gets it. Folks, get your scores in the chat. Um Lisa, I'm going to start with you because this is our last game of the night. Not the end of the show, but the last game of the night. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's got quite a large following, um, ESO Online. So I'm going to give it an 8.5. Okay, 8.5. Gilfly yeah. is saying an 8. iQual is 8. Chat, get your scores in now. Dave, what say you? I was thinking 8 as well for this one. 8 as well. Okay. Okay, going for an 8. Um... Flame says a seven. Any more scores, folks? Get them in now. Nope. I'm going to play it safe. And a 7.5, says Danker. Darth Blinky says an 8.5. Uh, Danker's really not sure about this one. Not sure how it's going to go. Let's see. Folks, this is your last call. This is the Elder Scrolls Online expansion, Gold Road. This came out on PC on Monday the 3rd of this month and is out today on PS4, 5, Xbox Series X, S, and 1. And if there is no more scores, I can tell you this got hey. eight out of ten. Hey. So got a seven out of seven. She's like 
First nice. time I think she's got a full streak. Normally we got Danka or Gozo or someone. Well done, Kylie. Can we get an extra shout out for Kylie? Everyone well who said Kylie. eight, congratulations. Well done. Um, so well done. There you go. Dave, you were on the nose with this one as well, weren't you? Mm hmm. Yeah. So oh. what can you do? You can do what some more speed on your chair. I think, you know, seventh game. So seven revolutions on the chair. Seven revolutions. Revolu oh, I can't even say that word, <laughs> let alone do it. Seven revolutions yeah. in the chair. Right. Are you ready? Here you go. Oh, Danka, thank you for the bits for doing the uh, new highlighted message. Greatly appreciated. Thank you for the 20 bits, dude. Which is, woo! Kylie, you get this. Right. Danka says, my gut let me down. But here we go. Get ready. Whoa. Oh, there we go. That was, How impressive. You that was that? impressive. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> is the room still spinning, is it? Yep. <laughs> that was 10. That was impressive. Whoa. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to be a bit off for a minute. Um, <laughs> let's come to our final news story while I just try and regain my focus. Um, so there has been a bit of backlash after... Uh, a recent announcements to do with some of the new Starfield content, not the DLC that was announced for September, but all the new mods, because they brought mods into Starfield. And recently it's been getting some negative reviews because normally mods in games are funny little things that people have worked on and you can add them to your game to make them more fun or more difficult and change it. Um, but they're normally free. And Fezda and Starfield have decided that some of the mods do actually cost money. One in particular that has kind of riled a few people is there was a mod for a one mission level, like one mission. That's it, one mission, which mm. costs $7. And mm. people are saying it's something that doesn't take a long to, lot to do, but it costs you $7 to do the tanker mission. Now, Todd Howard from Bethesda has come out and kind of defended this backlash and sta stated, yes, we welcome modders. Yes, we welcome modders to the community. However, a lot of them put a lot of time and effort to some work which is above and beyond what they do. And therefore, we want to make sure they get paid for the work they do. And that's why we're putting a price tag on some of these mods. So, uh... Obzaya, thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Um, what I want to know is, do we think this is genuinely what they wanted to do and pay back the people that have spent a lot of time and a lot of hours to do that? Yes, I quite. I wondered this. The horse armor. You remember the horse armor for two dollars? <laughs> Basically, put some armor on your horse, cost you two dollars. Um, or do we think it's bullshit? Thoughts in chat and Dave and Lisa, your thoughts on this? Because this has really riled up the Starfield community. It often does feel like a sort of way to sort of monetize the game a little bit more, doesn't it? Because I, I think you've got to buy their currency to then buy the mods. And I think yeah. the way the currency packs are done, you can never buy exactly the, the exactly the amount you want. You've always got to buy that little bit more, you know, the way most of these mm. things do. And I often find the problem when the people are charging for these sorts of mods. The price, all, the price never seems quite right because, as you pointed out, like that seven dollars for like, was it just one single quest or a small quest chain? Yeah, it does seem like massively overpriced when you think that you know you probably spent say seventy pounds on Starfield as a whole, and that had an absolute massive ton of content. So then, just like seven dollars for like one single mission just seems completely out of kilter with that. You know, if it was like a pound or less, you perhaps wouldn't complain as much. But when it's like seven pound for what it is. It does seem overpriced. And I think that's usually mm. the problem with these. They never really get the price in, so it feels fair. Mm. Man, it's, well, to be honest, modders don't work for free, and how they are able to make new mods if they don't get paid for it. If the modders only get 20% of it, then F them. Do we know how much they actually get? No. It wasn't discussed mm. in that interview. Um, Danka said there was uh, an interview with Todd Howard on the YouTuber, Mr. Matty. Uh, he will put the link in our Discord. If you want to follow the Discord, the link is there. Um, Lisa, your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's, it seems a bit bullshit for me, honestly. I just, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about Starfield in general. I feel like it's got better as it's gone on, but 
to now start having to pay for mods and stuff. Obviously, like if the mods don't even get a lot of the a lot of it anyway, I still think it's worth it. Honestly, I think I think it's right that if people put the time and effort and put something in to something that is actually like a quest or a level or something quite spectacular, then they should get paid for it. But then you could argue, mm. well, hang on, someone might make a design or a costume mod for a character that's actually really cool and should be paid for it. So it's kind of like, where does it start? Where does yeah. it end? But then it's a yeah. case of like, how much do they get for that? You mm -hmm. know, it's a bit of a... a, a so if it's a 2080 split, it's not really worth it, is it, really? Yeah, and we, we don't know what it is. Um, no. We'll see. If we find out, and if the backlash continues, uh, we will tell you more about Starfield, no doubt, uh, on a future show. I'm sure we'll be talking about the new um, DLC that lands in, was it September, I believe, to do Clash with the first anniversary of the game. So we'll have to see. Johnny, thank you so much. She says, got to shoot, folks. Have a great week. Great show. Crap games. Laugh out loud. <laughs> well, thank you, Johnny. Great to see you, mate. Thank you so much. Uh, and the question is, is it Professor that's paying the mod? Uh, mo Professor that's paying the models, or is it Microsoft? Oh, do you mean Bethesda? Did that come out wrong? Oh, yeah, there you <laughs> go. Bethesda paying the mo uh, mods or Microsoft. Well, that's technically, it's, it's both, really. And if you think about it. Because Bethesda is now owned by Microsoft, but it's it's kind of Todd Howard stated it, so it's really it's Bethesda that's looking after that side of things. So there you go. Um, for more latest news, watch the show next week and more game uh, reviews, as it were. Watch the show again next week. However, that is not the end of the show because at three p.m. today, the Nintendo Switch Direct dropped, and some people are hailing it as one of the best Nintendo Directs of recent times um i was hoping to get a very short synopsis of said show but no one's done one and i can't be asked to uh, edit a 42 minute video down so what we are going to do is skim through a lot of this but show you if you've not seen it spoilers folks because this is going to be show the showcase that went live at 3 p.m uk time but i think there was quite a lot of good stuff there was a lot of filler i will play it in the background um so i'll, I'll put the sound down low on this but things kicked off with yeah, Mario and Luigi uh, Brothership, which looks pretty cool. Yeah, so it's RPG, so it looks like it's a uh, turn-based combat to it. Yes, it is. It's, it's very much. Looks, yeah, but it right. still looks like it could be a, a decent game. Yeah. So we had a bit of that. We'll see if we can jump into a bit of gameplay footage. Yeah. Hang on. Here we go. But yeah, it's very much like Mario RPG and Paper Mario with the combat. It's turn-based combat. But there's other gaming elements of it. Um, I don't know how I feel about these. I, di I didn't really like the Mario RPG remake. It's it's a funny one. I... No, they're not for everyone, are they? But they're, they've Some people you know, loved it. popular enough that they've done remakes of them. Yeah. Um, so we had that. Then let's jump to this. Uh, we got the Nintendo World Championship. Oh, bloody Curry's advert. Here we go. <laughs> other, other, hey, electronic, laptop, there you go. other electronic stores are available folks so this was the nintendo world championship nes edition where there was tons of classic nes games but with gaming challenges that you could take part in um to rank high in the world and win prizes um so if you love your classic nes games you can basically play everything from mario to the original metroid was there um speedrunners are gonna have some fun with this yeah yeah um we had tons of RPGs. Fairy Tale 2 that dropped to so RPG fans. There we go. Uh, then we had... based off the anime? I guess Fairy so, Tale. yeah. Then we had uh, Square Enix were bringing Fantasian Neo. So again, more RPGs. This looks uh, very. Uh, really, this one looked quite nice. Neo Automata. Like, yeah. Quite yeah. the art style they've gone for with this look pretty cool. There we go. Mm. And again, turn-based combat on that one. Uh, then mm. I'll jump to this uh, Nintendo Switch Sports Basketball. So I've added basketball to Nintendo Switch Sports for anyone who's. Was it best? I mean, I'm not really that interested about this, but something to no, play I with. I knew when it first came out, but. It just kind of ended up gathering dust and I sold it off quite a while ago now. Yeah. So they've just added that. Uh, they went into real deep, deep 
detail with that. Uh, <laughs> then the uh, Disney Illusion. Let's have a look. Oh, anything Disney related, I'm in for. You yeah. know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> an expansion the, going uh, on. Illusion Island guy. Yeah, they've added an update to that. This looks good. This came out. This came out back end of last year, didn't it, Dave? We talked about yeah, this on the show. Sounds about right. And I've added some more stuff to it. Ah, finally a good platformer. There you go, says Jesse. Um, hmm. Then we had. What else did we have? Oh my God! Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Oh, which, now this looks cute. Which to me was pretty much Animal Crossing, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Just the Hello Kitty, Hello Kitty makeover. Uh, yeah, we Hello Kitty had... brand on it. <laughs> This was quite interesting, the way this looked. This was Looney Tunes' wacky world of sports. So it's a sports game, but I love the 1970s Ooh. aesthetic on it. So I'm not that hot about the actual game itself, but it just looked really good. Yeah, yeah they've, they've really captured the characters well, haven't they? I think they've gone for like yeah. a cel-shaded uh, style too. It yeah. does suit it. Interesting. Uh, that quickly jumped into what the fact that there's new Among Us update. So there's a noisemaker, tracker, a phantom, all being added into Among Us. So you go, more Among Us stuff. Uh, then we had... They've made, yeah, sorry. They've made a TV sorry. show of Among Us now, haven't they? They have. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. So this was... What was this one? This is like another sort of RPG monster game. Farmiga. Yeah. Mm. We had that. It looks like Grandia. Um, so that's that. We're going to go... Uh, Donkey Kong Country is back mm -hmm. with a HD remaster. I love Donkey Kong Country. Uh, I think this one yeah, includes this some extra levels that are only on the think, 3DS version. Yes, so stuff that wasn't even on the Super NES version. Mm. So I am all over that. I, I will want to play that because I love that game so, so much. DK, yeah. whoop! Love that. Oh, that looks great. Uh, then we had Dragon Quest 3 HD remake. So they've remade one of the Dragon Quest 2D versions. Nice. Yeah, they're doing that uh, HD yeah. 2D, as they call it, which I think always looks really cool. So this like, is what like they the did with the Octopath Traveler games. That yeah, were, that is like, exactly in style. It just looks really nice the yeah. way they do it. <clears throat> okay. mm. um, this was announced last year, but we've finally seen it. Funko Fusion. So basically Funko oh, Pops Funko Pops. in their own game. That's cool. You know, Iconic locations like that's uh, Fallout with Bats of the Future, Five Nights at Freddy's, etc. Uh, oh, interesting. This we already knew about because this is literally out next week, and I will be playing this when I get back from TwitchCon. Is obviously the Luigi's Mansion uh, HD remake, Luigi's Mansion 2. So we've already scheduled this to stream this. Um, oh, awesome. I do like the Luigi's Mansions, but I've never yeah. played this one because it's on the 3DS originally. Yeah, I, I never played this. So I'm really excited for this. This comes out. Actually, does it come out? Uh, yeah, it comes out back in the next week. Either Thursday or Friday next week. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, then we got this called the new Denper Man, which is an RPG as well. I'm going to jump to this. Uh, Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. So they remastered the Metal Slug games. The big shoot 'em up games, which I loved, but now you can actually have up to a, up to ten players. Um, I was playing the original one on the Neo Geo at Revival two weeks ago, so that's come out today. Uh, Darkest Dungeon Two, a sequel to a game that we talked about. Again, turn-based combat game. This did really well this in the review. Yeah, yeah, this came out on PC a while ago, didn't it? And did very well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Then the one that surprised a lot of people, The Legend of Zelda A Link to Past Four Swords. Oh, hello. What happened there? Oh, this is all games. This is stuff coming to the uh, the online yeah. service, isn't it? Some older NES games. It's games. Oh, nice. So, Metroid, some Zero Mission. Ones well, surely. Yeah, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, which I love. Legend of Zelda F Past Four Swords. Um, we then had um, oh, fucking an eye test, which I'll probably need after <laughs> spinning around a lot. Um <laughs> This was uh, Phantom Brave, the Lost Hero. Another RPG. Uh, this one looked quite cool. They're bringing the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighters 2 collection. So a ton of fighting games. Marvel and Capcom characters. Oh, this looks quite cool. 
This is striker like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, this looks really cool. There's lots of different X Men, Street Fighter, you name it. They're all in there. There's quite a big collection. Um, the Punisher. There you go. There's the Punisher. There's even like there's games that are not just two player fighting ones, but side scrolling mm. ones as well. Um, we also then had this looked quite cool. Uh, was this a new Super Mario Party game? I wasn't quite sure about it. So yeah, yeah. So it's oh, about I think five new levels to it, and then it's bringing back two levels from older Mario Party right. as well. So you've got quite a few courses in there, and then of course there's absolute shit ton of mini games to it. Yeah, it's got all the multiplayer stuff that we used to from the previous game. So this looks pretty good. So I love my Super Mario Party. Super Mario Party Jamboree. So that's coming soon. Uh, then this was a surprise one. This is Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which looked really cool. Mm. It's kept the same um, graphical style that they used for the uh, Link's Awakening remake yeah. that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, which looked really good. Um, now, the interesting one about this one is you don't play as Link. You get to play oh. as Zelda. Oh, nice. So for once, Zelda is rescuing Link. Yeah, she finally gets to take centre stage, and it looks like it's a pretty cool um, sort of combat system because she's not just yeah. taking like the master sword and playing the same as Link. She's got a particular staff, and you can use it to sort of make copies of items in the world. Yeah, and you can use those to help you solve puzzles, you know, just you know, stack things up to make your way around the world, or you can, um, I think, make copies of some of the monsters as well, and then you bring those in and they fight for you. Yeah, so it looks pretty cool. She's rescued him before. True. She has rescued him before. They went into a big deep dive on this. They spent a lot of time. So if you do want to watch the Nintendo Direct, go have a look. Yeah. Uh, Just Dance. We thought this was missing from Ubisoft. They obviously at Ubisoft thing last week, they announced Just Dance VR, but they decided to announce Just Dance 2025 on the Nintendo Direct first. And you've got everything from Lady Gaga to Green Day. So anyone who loves Just Dance... Uh, I know MZ Lee's going to lap this up. He was our guest on the show a couple of weeks back. So you've got more Just Dance. Uh, obviously, something we already knew about, which kicked off Summer Game Fest. Lego Horizon Adventures. They went a bit more in-depth on that. So fans of the Horizon uh, Zero Dawn games, uh, you've now got your own Lego adventure to play. I'm kind of like, eh, this should be cool. Because we know it's it looks all right, cool. but I can't say I've ever been that fussed about the Lego games personally. Yeah. Um, uh, another uh, iconic game, a game that was Game of the Year for many people a few years ago, finally makes its way onto Switch. Stray. Uh, Stray. The Amazing Stray, Stray game. Yeah. Supernova, hello. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. So the Amazing Stray is finally making its way to Nintendo Switch. Uh, we then also had a Lord of the Rings game, Tales of the oh, Shire. This. this I'm excited for. Yeah. So if you can't get enough of your Lord of the Rings, we've got a new game here which is really yeah. cool and then uh a new collection for all you ace attorney fans the investigations collection lands later this year so there you go uh so all you ace attorney fans there's more for that and and then we had um some more sort of anime style rpg the 100 line let me get this right 100 line last defense academy now, some of these games are for 2025, some are for later this year. Um, and then we came down to our final two games. We had another RPG in, oh, God, uh, Indiana Jones. It wasn't Indiana Jones. There you go. Off you go, Indy. I am excited for that, though. <laughs> I am excited for that. I just hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll pull that through. There you go. But we yeah. had yeah. Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven. Yes. Another RPG. This was very RPG heavy, this Nintendo Direct. But there you go. Um, and then the one that a lot of people have been asking for for years and didn't think it would happen. But ladies and gentlemen, coming out next year, and they were saying, we hope you're happy with this announcement. And this is something a lot of people will be waiting for. And I will play this in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Metroid, uh, if I got this right, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. This is yep. something people have been waiting years. Yeah, it's been about seven years since they originally showed like, the title card in like, a previous Nintendo Direct. So yeah, Everyone, a long time coming. 
everyone thought this would be a lead title for Nintendo Switch. However, they didn't state an official date. They stated it's coming 2025, which makes me think it might be one of the lead titles for the new Switch. Um, yeah, it might be a cross-release like I did, yeah. did with uh, Breath of the Wild, came out on both platforms. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks good. It looks good. Obviously, it's very doom in that respect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I I would say this was the one I was most hyped for. Oh, definitely. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, the Metroid Prime remake that I did. Uh, was it last year? That yes, was really, really good. good. So I'm looking forward to this. It look this looks great. There's all different aspects in it. It just looks top notch. And we got oh, yeah, quite a different platforming. Game. Yeah, mm. a bit of platforming, bit of first person shooting. Mm -hmm. Probably a few puzzles to solve um, by the looks of things. But they literally just teased it, and it was pretty much this is all you got. So you got some cutscenes, you got some gameplay, and then it literally just went 2025. There you go. Yeah. But How at least we know. To play FPS on Switch. Really? Is it easy? Is it hard? I honestly don't know. I've never played an FPS on the Switch. But no. The, the Metro yeah. Primary Master played fine. I mean, I was mm. playing it with the uh, Switch Pro controller, but I did I did do some of it, you know, in a in hand ha handheld mode, and it was yeah. perfectly fine. Mm. No issue with it. At all. Okay, Very interesting. Nice. Yeah. So there you go. So, folks, that's mm. the Nintendo Direct. Um, I'll start with Lisa. Game you're most hyped for for out of all of them? Uh, I'm going to say the Lord of the Rings one. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so I'm excited for that because it looks like a, a Dreamlight Valley situation where you get to like make your own little hobbit and make your own little shire um i'm not I'm, i don't have a nintendo um switch unfortunately um i would love to have one but i just haven't got around to one i got my playstations and i got my pc and stuff like that and i've got my xbox uh, game pass on my pc so i don't really need another console even though i'd like one i i can't justify getting one just yet but it just reminds me of like the old like donkey kong looked good as well yeah um, there's a few one there that look quite good i'm not gonna lie yeah. i'm with you mm -hmm. donkey kong Loved it when I used to have it on the SNES. Can't wait yep. for that. People know I'm already streaming Luigi's Mansion 2 HD remake, so that's a given. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it is Metroid. I will look forward to playing that. I think the Metroid was one. I didn't actually think they were going to announce it. I thought it was going to be something else. And also, that's uh, the, 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 the Zelda game, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I can't wait that for that. Cool. Those were my four, four from that. Dave, yours? Much the same as you, mate. The Zelda, mm -hmm. Luigi's Mansion HD 2, and definitely Metroid Prime 4. Those are the ones yeah. I, I like the most from that. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Cool. Wasn't part of Summer Games Fest, but it did land a week after Summer Games Fest. We did get the Nintendo Direct. And yes, as Kylie said, and people were still disappointed with the Metroid thing. And some people, some people were very disappointed. Mm -hmm. I actually thought it was a perfectly decent showcase. I think it was a, a bit RPG. And, no, it was a bit RPG and remake heavy. But come on, people. The Switch is coming to the end of its life. What else did you think you were going to get? Come on. Yeah, so yeah. they're not going to announce anything that's coming on the new Switch, I reckon, until either later this year or next year. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I think it was good. I think it was good and better. Some of the sh some of the showcases we got at uh, Summer Games Fest. So there you go, folks. Yeah. That is our show for you this week. Before we wrap up, Lisa, you've been oh. an amazing guest. Thank you so much. Um, tell us again details for Rawcon. Go for it, Dan. Thank you for the two hundred bits. By the way, greatly appreciated it. Tell us about <laughs> Rawcon. We'll drop the link in for people that yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, yeah, Rawcon is a streaming a stream team meetup that we're doing in um, Cardiff in Revolution's second floor. Um, and we're going to have loads of content creators there. We're going to have loads of Team Raw. We're going to have loads of community members. We're going to have sponsors. We're going to have game devs. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some a quiz going on as well. Um, we're going to have merch. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, it'll be awesome to see you guys there. It is free. We haven't got that many. Thank you so much for the follow. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've got a lot of follows from this as well. So thank you so much. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to uh, plug that, but also plug what we're doing on Friday as well, because I'm really excited yeah. to meet uh, Mags as well uh, at, the, at the weekend. Um, and uh, quite a lot of people that are in the chat as well are coming. Uh, Soul Strike's yes. coming. Darth Bink Blinky's coming. Uh, Supernova's coming. Yeah, Guru's Supernova. coming. So it's going to be a really fantastic weekend, and I can't wait to meet you all. Um, and, yeah, we can talk about Rock on there as well. But, yeah, thank you for letting yeah. me do this tonight. It was, it was really, really fun. I enjoyed yeah, you're it. very thank welcome. You. Thank you for being such a great <laughs> And if you do want to get your tickets, there's literally three tickets left for Friday's event, which are free. Mm -hmm. Once those tickets mm -hmm. are gone, that's it. We've got no more tickets. And Lisa, myself, and Kate and Brenny have got 
a lot of fun and a lot of surprises for you on Friday. And mm -hmm. we will be on the front page of Twitch on the Manchester yeah. channel, Manchester Meetup channel. So watch out for us at 8 p.m. on the front page of Twitch, which is a pretty I'm going to get the link for that now, actually, really quickly. <laughs> Put that in my chat. Oh, that page. We'll yeah. chuck that in. Yep. Uh, the chat there. I'll, put, I'll get it so now. There you go. Um, send it to me in the private chat and I'll link it because it might not let you put the link, Lee, so I don't know. Uh, green underscore hat. Yep, see you guys seconds. Friday. Looking forward to it. Uh, there you go. Right. Yeah, so uh, that's it. That's your... Uh, da, da, da. There we go. We'll do that. There you go. Here we go. For, uh, for Don't the... follow us. We're not streaming from our normal channels because otherwise Twitch would shut us down because it is their event. But mm -hmm. if you want to go watch us, Lisa, Kelp, Brenny and myself, and a load of other streamers, uh, go check that out. Go follow that and watch it live at 8 p.m. on Friday. We'll be broadcasting live from uh, RK Club in Berry. So there you go. Uh, Lisa, again, if anyone's not followed Lisa, go follow her. <laughs> go follow her socials. Go watch her. She's fantastic. Um, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. Thanks, thank you so much. You've been awesome. Dave, thank, thank you for having you, me. It's been always. awesome. It's always been awesome. Pleasure, thank you so much for being awesome. As always, uh, thank you to my wonderful chat, to my mods, to my my team that I have, Amy and Dave. I think Dave was here. I don't know if Dave is still here. Um, no, he's not. So uh, there you go. Um, but <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the wonderful people that have, have uh, spent bits and all the new follows. And I can't wait to meet some of you on Friday. Uh, and if any of you are coming to Timeless, which also Lisa is going to be at, come and say hi, because uh, we're, we're not too far mm -hmm. away from that. Let's go do a raid. Let's see who's on. Let's go continue and send the love. Uh, night to everyone who's going to shoot off. Anyone else, please do stay, stick around for the raid uh, as my stream deck just crawls on its ass to load up. Um, let's have a look. Who can we raid? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. There's quite a lot of people on tonight. we sport for choice. Uh, but I'm going to go back on that page. and. Uh, I could raid you, Lisa. <laughs> um, tell you what, someone else is going to be there. Let's, let's, <laughs> give, let's, let's give him a nice surprise. Faz, Faz also runs community meetups. He's on. Um, let's go surprise him. He runs community meetups oh, in Manchester as well, and he is playing yeah, Sonic, cool. uh, an all star racing transformed, which I love that game, it's fabulous. Um, Onslaught Tommy, thank you for the follow. Amazing. Let's go surprise Faz and do that raid. If I press that, is that going to work? Hi, Tommy. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you for being here, Tommy. Have I missed it? Oh, I'm sorry, Tommy. Yes, you have. We're about to raid out. Uh, for any of those, if the raid doesn't work, there is the link, folks. Um, go support Faz. Lovely guy. Um, he also does some work for Nintendo as well. He was repping the Super Mario Wonder Stand at EGX. Awesome guy. This will make his night. I'll tell you that straight away and all that leaves for me to say folks is thank you so much for watching wherever you are in the world have a great morning a great afternoon or a great evening and i shall see you again tomorrow for our community night where we are playing party animals so if anyone wants to join in it's free come and play Ooh. thursday still wakes the deep that horror game that we talked about and then friday lisa me kelp Brenny, live on the front page of twitch can't say a better <laughs> week than that we shall see you soon. We'll do oh, yeah. that awkward thing. We'll wait, wave until I press the button. Bye. 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 <laughs>